the snow in the hills, it's cold, I'm telling you. 36 <laughs> degrees, it's actually snowing in Portland in some areas right now. And uh, moving this way, we'll have to see if it gets here by the time the game gets going. But it's a cold one, Anthony, and Mike Riley bringing his Beavers into Austin Stadium, the new expanded Austin Stadium for the first time. This, you know, he's excited about it because he knows about the Civil War. He's been a part of it for a long time, being in Corvallis, Joe. On the other side, Mike Bellotti, these two coaches just fit their university so perfectly. Ninth year as the Oregon head coach, 69% winning percentage, and he's done a fabulous job this year getting his team turned around from a midseason slump. That's coaching, and that's what the coaches have to do. Get these players believing in themselves again, and that's what he did the last two, three games. Both teams are hot right now. Beavers have won their last two in blowouts. Ducks have won three of their last four. Both teams are playing well. Offenses are moving the football, and Oregon will return. Beavers will kick it off. The 107th Civil War is underway, and they scrim it down the field. And it finally gets into the end zone, and it'll be a touchback. And Kenny Washington really wanted a chance there, but Oregon will start at the 20-yard line. We're talking about butterflies, Joe. <laughs> I know both teams got some butterflies, emotions. I mean, it's all about this first play of the game right now. Let everything loose. Here comes Kellen Clemens, 12 touchdowns, seven picks, about 59% completion percentage. And first and 10 for the Oregon against this Oregon State defense. First in the conference, the best defense, and the best linebacker in Richard Siegel. Clemens gonna throw on first down. Plenty of time, man wide open, but he overthrows Demetrius Williams. Take a look at the lineups for Oregon. Clemens, Whitehead, even though he's got kind of a sore knee. Dante Rosario, the starter at fullback, although Matt Flobert coming in the football game as we speak. Demetrius Williams, Sammy Parker, the tight end is Tim Day. And on the offensive line, guys we've seen all year. Kniebel, Stites, Weaver, Snyder, and Della Grange getting a start at right tackle today. Second down and 10, and there's big Tim Day. That's a run it. Nowhere to go for Whitehead. He's hit behind the line. He's going to lose three yards. Joe, that fast Beaver defense, that's what they're all about, team speed. Take a look at the Beaver defense now. All you got to know about here is Swan Cut and Edwards. Those two guys really handle that right side. They do a great job. Linebackers, Richard Siegler is the best linebacker in the Pac-10, occupying the middle for Oregon State in the secondary. Brandon Browner playing very well, 6'4 corner. And Mitch Mewson, the Beaver leader in interceptions and approaching the all-time Oregon State lead when it comes to interceptions. Now Kellens in the shotgun on third and 13. Gonna throw it, steps up to the outside. Williams is there, he's gonna be short of the first down though. A gain of 10, but it's three yards short. And that first down play, Anthony, was huge. Those are missed opportunities. And, and, and Demetrius Williams was open on that play. Clemens has to find the touch, you know, to connect with them. Thing about emotions, that first play, he's a little hyper. That will settle down. He will settle down in time. So the Beavers get a quick three and out stop. And they'll get the football. So they deferred the opening kickoff, or the uh, toss, if you will, and decided to to let Oregon have the football first, and it paid off and a fair catch. Called for at the 42-yard line, and they're gonna have great field position to start their first possession. One thing you don't wanna do is give them a short field. No, you don't. <laughs> you wanna make them go the long way. But right here, Oregon State, maybe they may try a deep pass, take a shot. This is what Oregon's been doing good lately, not giving up the big play. 30 yards on the punt. Derek Anderson, under 50%. A lot of touchdowns, a lot of interceptions, and here comes the crowd. Everybody in Austin Stadium coming to their feet right now. Little fake, looking downfield, looking way downfield, and he's got a man. Newsom at the 40, gets loose. Beavers are already at the 30-yard line. So that's what happens when you give Derek Anderson a lot of time. He will hurt you. He has great vision looking downfield. You got to get people in his face. Gain of 28 to the 30. Everybody's thinking about run right here. The Ducks think about run. Newsom gets down the field, crosses the field, and then breaks the tackle. It's one thing the Ducks can't do. Let them break tackles after they catch the ball. Well, it's a great start for Oregon State. Just what they wanted, a three and out, and now they're deep in Oregon territory. 
Anderson's going to throw it again. Jackson wide open. One man to beat. At the 20 and goes down to the 17-yard line. Another first down. Beavers have come ready to play football. Derek Anderson, the quarterback. Steven Jackson, of course, the single back. Newsom, Farley, Ewis, Mike Hass having a good year out of Jesuit High School in Portland. On the offensive line, Kenan Sanchez, the spiritual leader of that football team on the offensive line. And here come the Beavers, just moving the ball at will in the early going. Two plays, and right down the field, and Anderson's going to throw it. Look into the end zone. Here he goes to Ewis. It is incomplete. He caught it, but they said he was out of bounds. And he did not have it. And Ewis says that's a bad call. I don't know, it was, it was a good play by, by Hughes, but I think about it, he was bobbling the ball. You have to have possession of the football right there. It comes up right now, then now his back foot is out of bounds, and the other foot is half, I think that right foot is still also out of bounds. One, doesn't have control, no, heel two. He, heel is on the gotta end have, line. Gotta have control. It'll be second down and 10 now. Jackson's going to get his first carry. Big hole. Jackson to the five, down to the one-yard line. That's what you have to do when you play against Oregon State. Stop Steven Jackson. You have to get eight or nine guys. It's a simple dive play. It's a single back set. Right there, Keith Lewis has to make that tackle. It's one-on-one. -on -one. you got to make the tackle. First and goal from the one, a great drive for the Beavers to open up the football game. They were so confident coming in, Anthony, almost to where you, you wondered if they were too confident, but they're backing it up right now. Double tight end set, U.S. resets on the other side, they'll go with two tight ends, they'll give it to Jackson, hit behind the line, and they lose two yards. Jerry Matson on the stop. Defensively for Oregon, Dorsey, Olshansky, Junior Savi'i, and Devin Long are the defensive linemen. Mitchell, Matson, and Martin, the linebackers. And in the secondary today, Marley Tucker, Justin Finnessy, Stephen Moore starting in front of Marcus Bins today. Second down and goal from the three. Now they'll go to the other side with Ewis, and they'll run Jackson. Looking for a hole, finds one. Still working, still working, and touchdown, Oregon State! And they made it look easy. Well, I think they kept the Ducks off balance by running past. Everybody thought the Oregon State was come out and, throw the, and run the football. First two plays, they threw the football. Then they give it to Steven Jackson. When you're this close to the goal line, you give it to your number one guy, number 34, he can find pay dirt, and he did. Six plays and 58 yards, only took him a minute 49. And it all started with Oregon's first down play when they could not convert a first down with an open receiver. And the extra point by Kirk Ulanimi is good and Oregon State has a 7-0 lead. Give him a short field, it's very difficult against this offense. Oregon State on top in the 107th Civil War. Ducks gonna have to play from behind here at Austin Stadium. Beavers lead it 7-0 here in the first quarter. Stephen Jackson getting the touchdown on a three-yard run after a very efficient drive for the Beavers, mixing it up. And, uh, Derek Anderson with a lot of time, hit a couple of big passes. Six plays, 58 yards. In a minute 49 for the Carl Jr. scoring drive. And Anthony, uh, boy, a lot of emotion in this game, but that's a, that's a shell shock drive as we look at today's Northwest Dodge Dealers keys to the game. Talk about controlling Jackson, and he's already got a touchdown. Well, you got to control Jack Jackson. You're not going to stop him, but you got to control him. And then play with emotion. You got to play with emotion, but un under control emotion. And then four quarters. The game is not over until the clock shows zero. You play the whole game. Got to be very disappointing for the Ducks to go through the week that they went through and be facing a 7 0 deficit right out of the shoot. Series history. Teams have gotten together a few times, haven't they? Oregon leads it by 10. Oldest rivalry went west of the Mississippi, and the home team has won the last six meetings. 
Oregon State will kick it off again. And they'll squib it again. Remember, it's a free ball, bouncing around. Kenny Washington picks it up, looking for a hole. Now he cuts back, has some room out across the 30. Still on his feet to the 34-yard line. That's when we talk about special teams, Joe. Special teams can make a difference in this ball game. Kick returns, punt returns. Kenny Washington can make a difference in this ball game. Kellen Clemens coming back out now. And, and games like this, Anthony, we were talking about it before. I mean, every play is so critical. You can point to single plays like that first down play. or You know, these are the kinds of games where any play that doesn't go your way can cost you seven points. Well, when you play against a good football team, okay, you can't make any bad plays. They all have to be very good plays. First and 10 for the Ducks at the 34. And they got to use a timeout. Did not like the way it looked for the Oregon State defense. Well, you know, that's smart. It, it, it really is. And as Kellen Clemens goes to the sideline to talk about it, we'll take a break as well and return to Austin Stadium right after this. Welcome back, everyone. Oregon State with an early 7-0 lead over the Oregon Ducks here with 11.38 to go. And 107th meeting of the Civil War. There have been some great ones. Anthony, you played in four of them. <laughs> yeah, never lost to the Beavers. Norm Van Brocklin, the Oregon quarterback in the old single wing days, pitching it to John McKay back in the 40s. You were a little faster than that when you played. <laughs> But he's finding pay dirt. He yeah. got to the end zone. That's all that mattered. There's John McKay. And, of course, he went on to such a great career at USC. And Oregon won that game 10 to nothing. Look at that scoreboard. Look Things scoreboard. have changed, huh? <laughs> What's technology's done, huh? Now it's all the techno funk and everything that goes on in the scoreboards. A little different in those days. Here we go. Oregon with a first and 10. They'll try to run the ball. Looking to get outside. Whitehead. His head down and pick up about three. Call it four yards on the, the game. Make it Setting up a second down and six. Well, that's impressive when you sit there and look at that Beaver defense in the middle of the screen. You see Terrence Whitehead, there's a lot of white jersey. Uh, that shows you that this team knows how to get to the football. Mitch Musin, the subject of an intense recruiting battle between Oregon and Oregon State. Played high school ball in Forest Grove and decided that the Beavers fit his needs a little bit more than the Ducks did, and he went to Oregon State and is having a great career. Second down and six, quarterback draw, Clemens. One guy to get by to get the first down, and he does get the first down out to the 47-yard line. Well, that's how you slow up that pass rush for Oregon State with those quarterback draws. He's dropping back right now, looking to run the football. Defensive line for Oregon State's moving up field. He finds the seams. Then he breaks the tackle to get a couple extra yards to get the first down. Somehow you got to slow that defense down by misdirections or draws. Ducks going with the all yellows today. Sammy Parker yet to touch the football. Ducks in a two tight end set. Clemens going to throw it. Got time looking for Sammy Parker deep. He's got him open and it is. Who's got it? Incomplete. They both had it when they went down, and it's incomplete. Fighting for the football. Fighting for the football. And you know, Sammy Parker had his man beat. And Clemens could have led him just a little bit further. Sammy had to slow down for that ball. That's why that was almost intercepted. Low play action. Clemens does a nice job of stepping up to it, but really got to get that ball in the, in the air with Sammy Parker. Almost a great play by both Second defenders, Browder and Parker. Ducks took a shot at the home run ball. Second down and 10. Little pitch to the outside. Kenny Washington gets around one guy at the 50. Gets the first down at the 42-yard hole. Going to spot it at the 43, which may be short of the first down. We'll have to see. Uh, uh, right at the marker. Yeah, I think they're going to give him the first down. They are going to give him the first down. Now, again, we talk about misdirection. That's how you slow this defense for Oregon State now. Misdirection, plays like that. Kenny Washington running north and south, knowing where the first down marker is, getting the first down. Ducks have used that play a lot in the past, but not a lot this year. And then they come out with it here on the second drive. Oh, 
First and 10 now for the Ducks, moving the football a little bit. That's Williams in motion. Clemens to throw. Here comes the rush. Outside of Williams. 40 hit and down, and it'll be a gain of about four yards on the play. That's that passing game that the Ducks have been doing lately is the quick passing game. They want Clemens to get rid of the football. They don't want him to deal with pressure. It's a nice little out route to Demetrius Williams. Put the ball in his hands, let him do his thing. There's Williams at a De La Salle High School in the Bay Area. Never lost a game there as a high school player. And off to a great start in his Oregon career. Terrence Whitehead still working and he gets to the 35 yard line, a gain of about three and a half. So it'll be third down and two right at the 35 yard line. Big play coming up. Well, the Oregon offense has been doing a good job of keeping the Oregon State's defense off balance by with the run and pass. Now, that's what you have to do. The passing game will open up with the running game. You gotta get those defenders soft, get them back it up a little bit, then you can run the football some more. Ducks on third down this year, 37%. This is the third and two. Clemens going to go out of the shotgun. And he's going to throw. A little quick out. Got a man. And the first down to Sammy Parker to the 27-yard line. That's that speed, Joe, with Sammy Parker running an out route. There's no way you're going to cover Sammy Parker man-to-man -to -man on an out route, especially with the safety. He's right there at the slot, right in the middle. He's running away from the linebacker. Good play calling right there by Andy Ludwig, the offensive coordinator for the Ducks. And yeah, we have a timeout on the field. Oregon State uses a timeout. And they'll talk about this drive for Oregon. Ducks have taken it all the way from about the 34. We're back after this. I'd like to welcome all of you watching on KEZI in Eugene, KDRV in Medford, KDKF in Klamath Falls, on Comcast Channel 14 in Portland, and a very special welcome to those of you watching us across the country on the Yes Network, either in New York or on your DirecTV or Dish Network, and also those of you watching on GoDucks.com on the Ozone around the world. Ducks on a great drive now to the 27-yard line, and Clevin's going to throw it on first down. Here comes the rush, going to the end zone. Parker looking up, and incomplete. Great play by Browner. Making Eric Williams. Great play by Eric Williams, who turned around right at the right time. That was a great defensive play by Williams. Turning around, looking at Sammy Parker's eyes. When his eyes get big, that's when the corner turns around and looks. If he looks too soon, he's going to get beat. Perfect timing, knocks the ball down. Great play. Right with him, step by step. Second down and 10 now. It brings Sammy Parker wide to the near side. Ducks are going to run it. Looking for some room is Whitehead, and there's not much there. One second and 10, and pick up a yard, or maybe a yard and a half. It'll be third and nine. So far, the successful plays that Oregon's been running is running the receivers at the outside linebackers. Uh, of Oregon State. You know, they got one good middle linebacker, Richard Siegler, but the outside guys are not as fast, not as good athletes. So right now they're trying to use those receivers for the Ducks underneath patterns, one-on-one -on -one against some of those linebackers. Big third and eight coming up. Here comes the blitz. Pressure, he rolls away from it. Now he's gonna run. To the 20, has the first down at the 15-yard line. Good recognition by Kellen Clemens to get to the sticks. A very smart play. And the good thing about that play with Clemens is that when he was running the ball, Joe, okay, he did a nice job here avoiding the rush, looking downfield. But when he decides to run, he's still looking downfield because he can throw it at any time. Then he decides to run and gets the first down. Ducks inside the red zone now. This will be the 11th play of the drive coming up. Ducks have used about five minutes off the clock. In the red zone this year, very good. 21 touchdowns and 32 trips as the sun comes out. Clemens, pressure, a little backside screen, needs a block. Whitehead, 10, 5, touchdown, Terrence Whitehead!
fortunate play call by Andy Ludwig. Again, I'm going to say it over and over again. Misdirection. This Oregon State football team is on defense is fast, Joe, but you got to get them one going one way and you go the other. A response drive for the Oregon offense against this Beaver defense. It's one of their best drives of the year. Great drive. They did it with a lot of pass, a lot of run, a little bit of everything. Quarterback scrambling. It's a screen. See, everybody's looking to the right. They throw a screen to the left. You get those blockers off the lineman of Oregon, out front of Terrence Whitehead. He gets in the end zone. And the extra point attempt is up, and we are tied at Austin Stadium. 7-7 seven to seven in the Civil War. What do you expect? These two teams going at it with a lot of emotion. Anthony, an outstanding drive, another look at it. Outstanding drive, and this one, again, they're looking one way. The Oregon State's going to the right. Now they have to retract to go back to the left. It's too late. Terrence Whitehead is out in front, scores a touchdown. That's how you attack this Oregon State's defense. And a great block by Sammy Parker as well on that play. Picked off a linebacker. That's why these Oregon, Oregon receivers are so well, because they block downfield. A lot of receivers don't like to block, Joe. These guys like to block. Take a look at the Carl's Jr. scoring drive. 11 plays, 66 yards. Just under four minutes, Whitehead the 15-yard touchdown pass. And another look at it. Pay special attention to the block by Sammy Parker. See, look at the Oregon State guys going to the left. Okay, now the pass is back to the right. The guys out blocking, Dan Weaver, Stites, making great blocks. Terrence Whitehead gets in the end zone. And Jared Siegel will kick it off now. Dwight Wright deep for the Beavers. And he'll squib one as well. This one kind of flutters down. Takes a hop up at the 10. Looking for a hole and hit hard at the 17 yard line. Jerry Matson on the kickoff coverage team. That's Jerry Matson on the kick. He's a start middle linebacker, but you know what? You put him on the kickoff team because he loves to hit people. And right here, that's a hit. An aggressive linebacker, aggressive football player right there, Jerry Matson. And that drive brought this crowd back to life, and that hit brought the crowd back to life. And they are bringing noise like they did in the Michigan game. Anderson back to throw, looking deep, out to Ewis, overthrows him, and it'll be second down and 10. Boy, the Beavers want to go down the field, don't they? Well, they do. They want to exploit the defensive backs for Oregon. But right there, Marley Tucker did a great job on the tight end. And anytime you're a strong safety and you're covering a tight end, you should win that battle. Keith Lewis walking with a little limp after that play as well. Marley Tucker coming off the field. Eric Gibson will come in the game for him. Second down and 10 now. They'll hand it off to Jackson. Not a lot of running room there, nowhere to go. And the Duck defense stacks him up after about a yard and a half gain. It'll be third down and nine. Well, I believe this game's gonna be one in the trenches. And right there on that last play, the Oregon defensive line did a great job of stopping Jackson without bringing an extra backer or an extra safety down in the box. The box there, meaning where the linebackers stand. Well, his fans are into the game right now. Everybody at that end on their feet. Third and nine for the Beavers. That's Ewis in motion. Anderson to throw. A little pressure coming, but complete. A big conversion for the Beavers and Derek Anderson. And usually you can tell right away with Anderson, and so far he's been pretty on. Oh, pretty on. You know, this game is about inches. And right here, Derek Anderson is throwing the ball. Quinn Dorsey, number 30, just inches away from hitting the ball. Great play. Nice pass. Complete out to Mike Hass, who uh, desperately wanted to be an Oregon Duck. Sure did. Made some tapes to try and get recruited by Oregon, but Ended up going to Oregon State, walking on, and then getting a scholarship in the offseason by Mike Riley. Little handoff to Jackson, and nothing doing for Stephen Jackson. Second down and 10. Talking about Stephen Jackson, 
the thing about Steven is you're not going to stop Steven all day long, okay? But you have to control him. Control those runs. Don't let him knock off a little 40 or 50 yarder. If, if as long as one is 10 yards, that's okay. Six minutes to go here in the opening quarter. Both teams with a touchdown. Ducks with three down linemen on the second and ten play, and they drop men way deep into the secondary. Wide open in the zone is James Newson. Oregon had eight guys into coverage that time. Newson still on his feet, and they'll mark him forward progress to the 47 in Oregon territory. Well, they're playing a zone. Oregon was playing a zone. But what happens in those zones? But those guys have the linebackers underneath got to drop. Newsom finds the hole. This is a zone. He notices the zone. He sits right there. Stops in the zone coverage. He's open. The backer's got to keep dropping. There's open space right there. Somewhere there has to be a backer dropping back. One thing we've seen Derek Anderson be able to do is complete a lot of passes when he doesn't face any pressure. Right. At all. Oh, yes. He can see the field very good. Being 6'4, he can see over his offensive lineman. Newsom goes in motion. They'll throw it again. Here comes the rush, and now he goes down back at the 44 yard line in Beaver territory. Quinn Dorsey and Igor with a little celebration after the sack. Joe, what Igor did so good on that play is that it was a one-on-one -on -one block, and he beat the one-on-one. -on -one. You have to beat the one-on-one -on -one blocks, and Igor gets past the center for Oregon State. You got to win that battle. If one guy's going to block you, you have to get to the quarterback as a defensive lineman. Second and 19 now, as Anderson wants the play to come in again. Down to 10 on the play clock. See if they have to use a timeout here, if he recognizes. Five on the play clock, four, three, and now he uses the timeout to save the five yards. So each team using a timeout. Well, you know, Derek has grown up a lot because last year or maybe the year before, he would have tried to run a play, going to call for a delay a game. He was smart enough to call timeout, smart play. There you see him having a chat with Mike Riley. Doing a great job in Corvallis and uh, just the perfect fit for what's going on at Oregon State. Everybody knows what a great guy he is, great football coach as well, and uh, represents the university in a, in a great manner. Great to see Mike Riley in Corvallis. Hey, fans, basketball is here as evidenced by Oregon's win over Fresno State last night, a fun night at backcourt. Well, you get a chance to watch the Duckmen and women on December 6th at the Rose Garden in Portland's the Pap A Jam. Men's team will take on Marshall. The women face Colorado State. For ticket information, 1-800-TICKETMASTER, or you can go to Ticketmaster.com. You can also go to the Rose Garden ticket outlets in the Rose Quarter in Portland, and uh, should be a fun night. Oregon looked very good last night, Anthony. Yeah, how was that game? It yeah, was like they, some, some freshmen were playing well. That's right. Mitch Platt had a nice game, and it was uh, sold out. You know, middle of the like a middle of the season Pac-10 game against a team that was a defending champion of the WAC, and uh, they played great in front of a great crowd. And we have a great crowd here, and uh, they're chanting Igor, 45 tackles, three sacks, two fumble recoveries for him this year. And he had a great game against Michigan earlier this year. And when he plays well from the inside, the Ducks have a great defensive performance. And on this play, he's on the nose, and they're going to rush three. Will slant over the middle. Jackson has it. And the rushing three men against Oregon State so far has not worked as they convert on second down and pick up the first. Oregon State has really turned up the zone that Oregon is playing. Oregon's playing the zone, and they're a little confused back there because guys getting lined up in the last minute. Steven Jackson, now, I think Jerry Matson was on the inside guy. He was almost there, but almost not good enough. We'll see if they scrap that three-man rush. They've been hit a couple of times hard on it now as the Beavers convert on a second and 19. Again, looking deep, going to the fade. Finnessy's out there, and Newsom tries to get it, but running stride for stride was Justin Finnessy. Justin Finnessy, he is a competitor, and he's come a long ways, Joe, since the beginning of the season. When you got Justin Finnessy on Newsom, I'm telling you, Newsom is a good football player, but right here, Justin gets his right arm up and kind of look. I think he might have knocked it away here, but it's perfect timing. 
right with that ball. He's getting ready to go to the pocket of the receiver. Finsley puts his hands in the pocket, knocks the ball out. Really got to like the Beavers' posture on offense, though. They're attacking, yes, going away, going down the field. Ducks need to come up with a big play. Anderson going to throw it again. Looking over the middle. It's caught. And dropped after a three-yard gain, looking for his tight end, a little uh, misdirectional screen. Call it a gain of four to the 29, and it'll be third down and six. Well, this is a crucial play for Oregon State on his last play. Everybody's looking at Steven Jackson going to the right of the screen, face screen to the right, throw it down to the middle. Right there, the defensive line for Oregon got to turn around and go make that tackle, as Igor did. Actually, mark it just before the 30-yard line. And third and six for the Beavers. Here comes the blitz. And they dump it off, and it's dropped. A big drop by Kenny Farley, who might have had a touchdown. Oh, that was a huge drop. Missed opportunities. Long foul ball for the Ducks. But right here, here comes the blitz. Put pressure on Anderson. Let him find somewhere to throw the football. He finds a guy, but the guy drops drops the football. Kirk Amy will come in for a long attempt. It'll be a 48-yarder straight ahead. A Luke Rosa Award finalist. He's had an outstanding year. Only missed a couple. Kind of a bad snap. Back. Ball's loose. Still loose. And out of bounds. A bad snap and a bad hold, and Oregon gets a big break, and they'll get great field position at the 38-yard line. We got a flag over here, Joe. Emotions. It might be on the Ducks. Let's see what the flag is. See whether it's a post-possession foul, a dead ball. It's Could definitely after the play, it, it, and it's an emotion. You, know, you got to control your emotions out here. You can't let your emotions get the best of you. Got to be smart. It is a dead ball, personal foul on Oregon. Personal foul indicated incidents. See, and right here we're talking about field position. Okay, now it changes. Oregon right now can have the ball at the 35. Now they're going to go back. So depending on where they mark that, it's probably going to go back to the about 23 yard line. Maybe a little closer than that, right around the 22. Dead ball, personal foul, 15 yard Dead penalty ball, from the end fouls. of the play, first down. Once the Beaver uh, player went over into the sideline, take another look at it, you see the bad snap. Really, it was it, a good it, snap. It was a good snap. Just didn't handle it. it, it not at all. At least the ball the first now, this flag came real late, so I don't know where it's at right now. Now, see, Bilotti's getting his body into it. I'm not sure where the personal foul was. See a lot of the Duck players running over there. Maybe they just crowded around too much. Out of view of the camera. We'll be at the 21-yard line. And a missed opportunity for Oregon State. Stephen Moore had a chance at Carl Tobin. He just couldn't get him. Here comes the rush. And now he's going to run it. Trying to get outside. And we'll pick up about eight yards on the play out to the 28. And now another flag comes down, and this one might be on the Beavers. I think this one is going to be on the Beavers this time. When I talk about emotions, it works for both teams now, OK? No stupid penalties. It's a dead ball, personal foul on Oregon State, and so Oregon will get the 15 yards right back. Get it right back. Dead ball, personal foul, late hit on the defense. 15-yard penalty from the end of the play. First down. That hurts. That hurts as a, as a defense, Oregon State's defense. They did a nice job of, of containing them a little bit. Clemens did a nice job of, of faking out the linebacker, getting upfield. But right now, he's down. Uh, if they call that, it's a little iffy. But what the referees are trying to do, Joe, is control the football game. They know it's a Civil War game. You know, they got to try to control it. They may be flag happy. So the ball out to the 43-yard line, which is about where it would have been if Stephen Moore had brought Toby down, and Oregon will run the ball on the counter. Beaver defense is there after a gain of about a yard and a half. Up a couple yards to the 46. On that play, it looked like something was going to open up to the right. It was a counter play by the Ducks, but then he, 
as he gets right to the line of scrimmage, there's a wall of Beavers. And leading that wall is Richard Siegler, a linebacker that will be playing in the NFL one day. Oh, yeah. Probably a first-round pick. He's going to be up there. Very good. He's a smart football player, and I think that's his best asset. He's very smart. Second down, we'll call it eight with just more than two minutes to go here in an exciting first quarter. Clemens to throw, a little fade, looking for Sammy, and he's not going to get there. And the flag comes out. Flag is on the field. It might get the Oregon State defense for a hold on Parker. Well, it looked like Sammy was trying to create separation, and he couldn't. It is holding on the defense, and it's an automatic first down and 10 yards from the line of scrimmage. See, those referees, when they look at cornerbacks, they're looking for those arms extended. Holding defense, 10-yard penalty from the previous spot and an automatic first down. Oregon State is the most penalized team in the conference. Uh, Oregon next in line. <laughs> That's Washington State up there as well. Both teams have had trouble with penalties. Yeah, they've had it, you know, and it really hurts the football team because you're always going backwards. You don't want to go backwards. You want to go forward. And, and, and also, you give teams opportunities again. You know, give them another chance. You don't want to give them chances. Ducks at the Beaver 44 now after a couple of Oregon State flags. Beaver show like they're bringing the blitz this time. Ducks are going to run it, counter the other way. And from the backside, the tackle is made after Whitehead picks up about two yards. And Bill Swancutt coming in from his end spot to make the stop. Swancutt, another good defensive player for Oregon State. A guy that's not that big, but he's a football player. That's what it counts. A lot of times when these NFL scouts are looking at players, they don't look at the times and, and their size and look at, can he play the game? And another flag comes out. Not sure what it's about. It's like might be on Richard Siegler, who was in the uh, face of the official. And now Mike Riley calls him over. Unsportsmanlike conduct on the Beavers. And that was Richard Siegler, just couldn't let it go, and was in the uh, official's ear. Dead ball, unsportsmanlike conduct, defense, 15 yard penalty, first out. Well, that's costly. Mike Riley wants an explanation. Well, the thing about it is that. You know, you got to remember, it's a team game, Joe. And these guys are talking to do all that. They got to remember, there's, there's 50 other guys. I mean, if, if you look at he's looking at the referees, talking to the referee. The referee's telling him, hey, don't say anything. Don't say anything. I'm telling you, I'm warning you, too late. And that's a tough situation because they're not. nothing's going to change. No, it's not going to change. The, when the teams are in the huddles. I mean, there's nothing. You know, Richard Siegler's emotional, but nothing. There's no positive that can be gained from that discussion. No. Beavers with three penalties now, 40 yards, all on this drive. The entire drive has been Oregon State penalties. It's now to the 27. Clemens to throw, they get contained. Now he's looking like he's gonna run it, and he's gonna slide down right at about the line of scrimmage. Clemens is gonna have to be careful on that rollout. If he stops, that Oregon State defensive lineman is coming right, uh, right around his back. I mean, they're, gonna, they're gonna hit him if he stops. Clemens can run the football as well. Everybody thinks of, uh, Derek, or of uh, Jason Fife as being the main runner, but the last few games he showed us that he can run, and he's had a couple of big plays here today running the football. You're right. Everybody's looking at the matchup between Anderson and Clemens, and Clemens has the nod of the running game because he can run the football, he can scramble. Derek does it, has a nice ball going down the field. And a nice job by the Oregon State secondary as uh, the Ducks broke contain on that play, but nobody was open. Now they'll pitch it. Uh-oh, three beavers out there, and Washington cuts it back up. What a play by Kenny Washington, who turned nothing into an eight-yard gain, setting up a third and two. Well, those Beaver football players knew that Kenny Washington has some speed, so it's just this fake toss, this toss. These guys, Beavers, are flying to the football, but then he stops and cuts back. That's hard for a, a guy who's really fast to stop on a dime and come back. And Kenny Washington did that. Juan Edwards making the stop from the inside, and that is the end of the first quarter. Tied at seven, but the Ducks are on the move here at Austin Stadium. Beavers struck first, but the Ducks came right back in the 107th meeting of Oregon and Oregon State. It's the Civil War returning right after this, after a word from our local stations on the Oregon Sports Network. And welcome back to 
Watson Stadium on a very chilly day and it gets a little darker and a little darker as the time goes by. I don't, I don't think we'll see any snow today, but there's an outside possibility at it. Thanks for your sponsorship uh, to Safeway and Southwest Airlines. It's a great way to help Oregon Athletics. So we'd like to thank Southwest Airlines and Safeway for being a part of Oregon Athletics. They also sponsor a, an away Oregon football game for some fans to get to. We appreciate their efforts. And of course, Oregon flying to the south somewhere for a bowl game. And if you're up in Portland, you might get a chance to hop on Southwest Airlines and get on down to the Oregon bowl game. Last run. Kenny Washington. Kenny Washington is stopping on the dime. You see three beavers go right to his left, cuts back and gets positive yards, gets north and south. Nice play by Kenny Washington. Sets up a big third and two. Ducks are running the ball. 55 yards running. We look at the rushing yards for Oregon State. Again, Steven Jackson, you cannot stop him all day long. He's going to get his yards. He's, I think you have to give a lot of carries to get his yards against a fast Morgan defense, but he will get his yards. He'll get some good plays coming up here soon. He does have a big catch for the Beavers so far. Third and two. Kenny Washington is the tailback. Dante Rosario lines up in the H-back spot. Now he'll shift straight to the I formation fullback. Sometimes they like to give it to him on the quick hitter. Clemens going to throw it. Looking downfield. Got a man. Williams. Touchdown. Demetrius Williams. On a rocket from Kellen Clemens. And the Ducks lead for the first time here this afternoon. Joe, that had to be a broken play because Demetrius Williams was wide open. And that's not the, the Oregon State's defense type of play that they have all the time. It's all year. Leaving a guy wide open. Right there, there was no one within 15 yards of Demetrius Williams. And the Beavers made it easy for the Ducks. Oregon really only had to have two good plays. That was the Washington run yes. and that play right there. Exactly right. Jared Siegel on as Oregon puts a touchdown on the board on the first play of the second quarter. The extra point is up and good. Flag comes down and Oregon leads it 14 to seven. I believe it's gonna be a running into the kicker is what the flag is. And they'll mark it off on the kickoff. It's just the five yard variety, so Oregon will just move it up five yards for the kickoff. Demetrius Williams wide open in the end zone, and they lead it by seven. Demetrius Williams with the touchdown, his eighth of the season, excuse me, of the season. Oregon leads it by seven. First play. And the drive helped out a lot by some Oregon State penalties, but also Kellen Clemens getting down the field and making some plays. Well, the key word you said right there, Joe, is making the plays. And these guys from Oregon right now are making more plays than Oregon State. Again, the game is not over. Still two quarters to go, but somebody's out there making plays. It's on Oregon right now. You sure the game can't just be over? <laughs> Mike, Lottie would, Mike Lottie would love to just call it a day right now. Six plays, 64 yards on the Carl's Jr. scoring drive. Demetrius Williams, 19 yards on the touchdown reception. And penalties really hurt Oregon State on that drive. And another one here allows the kickoff to come up to the 35-yard line instead of the 30. We'll see with that extra five yards if they allow Siegel to give it a, give it a run. See if he can put it out of the end zone. Well, he, he definitely has the leg to do it. The winds today are a little bit from the north, northeast actually, coming in a very odd way here at the stadium. Usually it comes out of the west or northwest or southwest, but this is coming from the east today a little bit. Very cold. And Siegel will go ahead and squib it again. And it will hop up at the 10 yard line. Beaver's going to get great field position. And another huge hit by Jerry Matson. My goodness! Now, you don't want to see that, Joe. You don't want to see a guy laying on the ground like that. But it was a clean hit, a very clean hit by Jerry Matson. But right now, what's more important is the health of that young football player. Those hits like that, you want the football player to get up from that. You don't want to see injury. But I tell you, listen to this hit.
Now that's a hit. His mouthpiece is out. He's, he's out on his feet right now. I mean, he's, he's out on the ground. It's Harvey Witten who's down. And we can only hope that he's going to be getting up here pretty soon. And we're going to take a break. Hopefully we can get him up and to the sideline and that Witten will be okay after the big hit from Jerry Matson. We're back to Autzen after this. Welcome back, everyone. Still uh, taking a look at Harvey Witten. You see Mike Riley, very concerned. He, he moved after he got hit a little bit. But since then, has not moved a whole lot. He hasn't moved at all, Joe. And again, that's not a good sign, but also they're trying to keep him from moving because they're trying to figure out the damage. Uh, talking about dealing with his neck or his spine. I just hate this part of the game. Again, he, he catches the ball on the run. I don't think anybody blocked Jerry Matson. Jer Jerry Matson comes in unblocked and loads a shoulder right into his his, his shoulder or his, his, his head. Now he starts to lean over, starts to get up, and then you'll see his mouthpiece come out. Could be his jaw. He might have, you know, I've seen a lot of players get hit like that and they break their jaw. I mean, you know, football players love the contact. They love hitting people. And they, they dream about hitting somebody like that. But you want the guy to get up after you hit him. I mean, that's all about the family of a football player, about you want to feel like I hit somebody, you know, nice hit, you know, help the guy up, congratulate you. But for the guy to lay down like that, it hurts the Oregon Duck players as just as well as the Oregon State guys. Well, that's the thing is there's, you know, there's got to be that mutual respect. Even though you've got teams that are, you know, opposed to each other and rivals, there's still a mutual respect of what you have to go through to be a college football player. And both teams praying right now. Well, oh, you know, you know, and that wasn't just that was just a good hit because he was unblocked. Jerry Matson, no one blocked Jerry Matson. He's running 40 yards, 50 yards down the field, unblocked, and lowers his shoulder. Now, see what Oregon State's going to try to do is take this right here, you know, as some energy, as some fire. But it, it really, it, that's not about fire. It's about a guy getting up, being healthy. Just kind of brings it back to reality for everybody. Every, all week long, everybody all fired up. And, you know, no one's life changes whether you win or lose no. this game. Nobody, you know, nobody goes home to their kids. You go home to their families. You're not a better person if you win the game or lose, a worse person if you lose the game. No. And that part of it is maybe you've gotten a little out of hand and, and you hate to see that sort of a thing. I mean, but, you know, what's important is what these young men do for the universities. Well, and, and what's important is this young man gets his health back because you're right, nothing changes after the game won or loss. What changes if, he get, if you get injured, you can never walk again. You know, you can never move again. That's what changes. And I think people need to realize that these young men put their bodies on the line. Yeah, they're, they get scholarships. That's great. And they get great educations and at both schools, fine universities. But, you know, the, what I'm saying is they're out there every day, and it's they're students. You're they're right. kids. And, you know, it's not to, they do this for all of our enjoyment, and I think maybe sometimes it gets out of hand. True. What's important is that uh, these young men end their careers healthy and proud of what they've accomplished at their universities and move on to successful lives. We're going to take another break here in Eugene. Hopefully we can get a report for you on Harvey Witten, and we'll be back to Autzen after this.
Welcome back, everyone. Oregon leading at 14 to 7 here, but the more important aspect of things is the health of Harvey Witten, and he's onto the cart now, and he'll have the finest medical attention that you could ever have. Let's hope this is one of those uh, take him in for observation. Joe, the, stabilized. Joe, the hardest thing about this is that, you know, some, someone he loves, his loved ones are watching this right now, and that's what's hard, and that's what I went through as a football player, that my wife was at home, or my parents were watching me, and I was hurt, and I was laying on the turf, and they don't know what's going on. And, and, and that's why you want to see a guy get up so fast. That's when I was a player and I got hurt. i jump up real fast to show that I know my wife or my, my family was watching that I was okay. And when, you're, when your family's watching you down on the ground, it, 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 they can't do nothing about it. It kills them. See, they're giving him some oxygen as he heads out. So our prayers and thoughts are with Harvey Witten and his family and friends. And we can only hope that we'll get some information, some good news here very soon. Beavers back with it. Steven Jackson, nothing doing. Boy, it's hard to even get back into the game. Yeah, and it messes the flow up. And, you know, we're talking about hard for us. It's hard for these football players. It's a little cold out there. They've been standing for a while. You know, when I hit like that, Oregon State's trying to get emotional from it, but sometimes that's not going to work. There is a federal law that if they don't want to give out any information, they don't have to about his condition. So not guaranteed that we'll hear anything, but we hope to. Anderson back to throw, looking downfield and complete for a first down. Caught by Joe Newton. Morgan State does a great job of, of, of passing the ball to the tight end. Spread the ball to the tight end. Right there, Ramon Reed, the linebacker for the Ducks, was, was in coverage. He just inches away from getting the football. Derek fits it right in, perfect spot. Nice play. Great block by Steven Jackson as well to cut down Devin Long. And he'll get the football, looking for some room, carrying the pile, and that's what Steven Jackson does. Looks like it's going to be no gain, and it ends up being a five-yard gain. <laughs> He's a big man. He's, again, weighs about 225. A lot of people, when you come up to Steven Jackson, you think he's going to make a tackle. You think he's going to run over you, then he fakes you out. Then you think, okay, he's going to fake me out, then he runs over you. Is this it for Steven Jackson? Of course, you have another game at USC in the bowl game, but a junior, yep. is he headed to the NFL? Yeah, he's headed to the NFL. He is, the scouts love him. All the pro players love him. He's going somewhere next year. And you can't blame him. Guys like Ken Simonson, who might have had a chance to be a high draft pick if he would have gone out after his junior year, stayed, and it, and it hurt him. Inside to the tight end, Ewis with running room across the 40 to the 35-yard line. Talking about throwing to the tight ends again. I think that's what Derek Anders is looking for. Get to the tight ends. I can't get the ball downfield. I'll throw to the tight ends. A quick, safe throw. Ewis beats the linebackers, breaks the tackle. Nice play. And Derek Anderson is 8 of 12 passing. Again, he's less than 50% overall on the year, but he's off to a great start here. Beavers at the 35 now. They'll give it to Jackson. Got a little bit of a head of steam, and he'll fall forward for three yards. They're going to keep giving the ball to Jackson. I mean, he's your best player out there. You've got to keep giving him the football. Eventually, he may break one or two. But you've got to keep feeding him the rock. They give him the ball to the 31, so it's a four-yard gain, setting up a second down and six for the Beavers. Shift to the other side, and they'll give it to Jackson, and he slips down, and a flag comes out too. So really, it's decision time if, if this flag is on the Beavers. Do you want to give him a third and six or a second and sixteen? I would think the second and sixteen would be the preferable number, and it is holding on the Beavers. Well, Bellotti likes to take him back. I mean, that's his philosophy: take the people back, get them out of field goal range. Beavers have been so good on third down today, though. Yes, they have. Holding offense. Ten-yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay, second down. So they'll take this one back to the 41-yard line. The 
official uh, messed up his count, I think. Now he's got it figured out. Crowd trying to bring some noise now. On second and 16 for the Beavers. Ramon Reed into the game now for Oregon at one of the end spots. Let's show like they're bringing pressure. See what they do is how they shift. And they'll just rush the four, but here they come. Anderson goes down back at the 50-yard line. That was a great disguise by Oregon, Joe. Great disguise. Short blitz coming out of it. And the defensive line getting to the quarterback. Igor almost got the ball away from Derek Anderson. Igor's playing like this is his last game. He's only a junior. He's playing like this is his last football game. He'll be back another year. Third and 25. Ducks want the noise. And they're getting it. Beavers might try the home run ball. Ducks are confused on defense right now. Stephen Moore gets down. Anderson going to throw it. And he just jumps it off to Stephen Jackson. Jumps over a guy and goes down to the 37-yard line. So it will be fourth and about 12 yards. And it's really decision time for Oregon State. They can punt it and try and hold it, or they can go for the long field goal. Well, I, 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 if they believe in the field goal kicker, they're going to go. They're going to try it. Right here, this is dangerous. I mean, Stephen Jackson, you got the ball in open space. Look out. It would only be a 53-yard attempt. I'm a little surprised they're not going to attempt it. Joe, I think they're worried about the field position. They don't want to give Oregon that good a field position right now. Ducks stay in their set defense, expecting a fake. Toby will go ahead and punt it and kind of get away from it, and it's going to get into the end zone. So the net is going to be 16 yards. And a big break for the Ducks. They had guys down there, but that one skirted into the end zone. They had guys down there, and missed opportunity. Now the Oregon gets the ball at the 20-yard line. Oregon State had some nice drives on that last series. They just didn't get in the end zone. Derek Anderson, 9 of 13 passing so far for 148 yards already. I mean, this is a nice punt. They didn't get the bounce that they wanted. It's all about that bounce. You know that football is not round, so sometimes you don't get the bounces that you want. Ducks with the ball and the lead for the first time today. Eight on the play clock as Clemens barks out the signals. They'll run on first down. A little bit of room, still working. And a gain of about seven yards for Terrence Whitehead. Now the offensive line is doing a great job of creating seams for the running back, Joe. Dan Weaver, Stice, again, they're creating seams. Terrence Whitehead. Runs with great vision, finding those seams, and then breaking tackles. As a running back, you've got to be able to break some tackles to get some extra yards. Second down, and we'll call it three. Looking for some room. Going to have the first down across the 30 as the Oregon offensive line doing a good job. And a very patient run by Terrence Whitehead. Well, that was Dante, Joe. Oh, Dante Rosario. Oh, Sorry and, about and that. That's patience. Talk about patience. As a true freshman, showing patience like that, waiting for that hole to open up. Great play. I saw that second number four, and uh, Coach is trying to mix it up, putting Dante Rosario at the tailback, which he has run before. He's yes. used that over time. Anthony, the last three games, I think, they've brought in Rosario as the single back. Uh, they have some running backs for the future, Oregon does. Day goes in motion. Clemens going to throw it. Steps up. Good protection. Looking downfield. He gets away. And if he's got some speed, he's going to have big yardage. And he'll take it all the way out to the 46-yard line and out of bounds there. Clemens is playing with a lot of poise. Joe, he's playing very smart. Very, very smart. He's looking downfield. His athletic ability allows him to avoid the rush right here. And now he tucks the ball and gets downfield. Positive yards. Wants to make sure the uh, Oregon State trainer is okay. <laughs> Maybe he's asking her on a date. That, Who knows? That's Clemens. He's just a, a gentleman. From Burns, one of the nicest young men you'd ever want to speak to. 
This is Burns weather today. Whitehead up the middle with a hole out to the 40 yard line. 14 yard pickup for Terrence Whitehead. Again, you talk about patience, show right there. Terrence Whitehead showed a lot of patience. That's a counter play. And those plays take time to develop. The, the holes open a little bit late. As a running back, you got to be slow a little bit. As soon as that hole opens, you explode through that hole. Ducks have moved the ball 40 yards on this drive. Whitehead with 32 yards on eight carries. And now he'll go out in motion. Clemens going to throw, hit from behind, and it'll be an incomplete pass. Well, that outside pressure has been slowly getting closer and closer to Clemens, and that time it, it caught up to him. Somehow as a quarterback, you have to have eyes behind your head. You have to be able to feel that pressure. Know when a guy's coming around your backside. And that's Clemens being a young quarterback. As he gets older, he'll feel that pressure. You know, by the crowd noise, by the pattern of the defensive lineman, you can hear the lineman coming around the corner. Phil Swancutt with the pressure there. And it'll be second down and 10 here at the 40-yard line. Clemens going to draw up and go on the quarterback draw. It's hit and takes it to the 35-yard line. Clemens on the quarterback keeper picks up about five to the 35. Clemens and now a big third down coming up, Anthony. Tough quarterback. Clemens is a real tough. He lowers his head, trying to run over a linebacker. Sometimes I know those offensive coaches kind of cringe when they see your quarterback running in the middle, ducking his head, trying to run over somebody. You don't want that too often. Sammy Parker is lined up at tailback right now. Now he shifts out. And Matt Floberg is back there. Clemens going to throw it. Looking downfield, Williams, and he can't get to it. A little too high, and now it's decision time. With the 37, you could punt or you could go for the long field goal, and I think they're bringing Jared Siegel in. This would be a monster kick. The wind's at his back a little bit, just a slight breeze. Well, he definitely has the leg to kick this ball through the upright. I think it's all about accuracy. Can he get it right down the middle of those yellow posts? It's a 53-yarder. It's the same spot Oregon State decided to punt the football last time. Snap is down. Kick is up. It's on its way, and it is no good. He had the leg, but he pushed it right. And now the Beavers have the ball right there. That's the accuracy we talked about. He has the leg, but he has to get it right down the middle. Another look at it. Boy, had a chance. It didn't hook, Joe. You know, those kickers want that ball to hook a little bit as they kick it. They kept going to the right. And you can see he had the leg. It would have got over the bar. Robin Ross, heartbroken on that one. As Anderson back to throw, now he's running. Now he gets rid of it and looks for Ewis, and no, it hit the ground, incomplete. And Ewis wants to argue about it, and then he throws the ball down. Fans want a penalty on him, but they're not going to get it. Well, the difference right now, what we're seeing Derek Anderson, is pressure from the Oregon defensive line. Without any blitzing, no linebackers coming in there. Got the defensive line, the four guys getting to Derek Anderson. U.S. looking at the scoreboard, wanting to see if it was a bad call or not. And a look at it. Looks like a close call. He might have caught catch. that. He got it either way. He might have caught that ball. He had a right to gripe. Jackson off the right side, and nothing there for Stephen Jackson. And they'll give him forward progress to the 37-yard line for a gain of one. It'll be third and nine for Oregon State. Nothing but yellow jerseys at the point of attack. Attack. You know, and what's so impressive about the Oregon defense, Joe, is that they're doing this. Anytime you play against the Beavers, you always bring a safety up now near the line of scrimmage to help you stop a running back like Jackson. 
the Ducks are not doing that. Their safeties are still deep. Crowd is warmed up by now. 35 degrees out there. And third and nine. Beavers have four yards on the ground, and Anderson's going to throw it. Looking way downfield. Man open. Newsom is there, and he makes the catch. Wide open, and Anderson put it to him. Pretty clear when Anderson doesn't face pressure, he's going to hit his man. He sure does. When you let that man see the field, he's going to find an open spot. And Oregon's running the zone. They're not, they're not playing man. He's running the zone. And Newsom does a great job of finding the open spot. Converting. Newsom with three catches for 66 yards already. Here in the second quarter, 6.30 to go. Beavers now in duck territory. Trailing by seven, looks like they got the reverse set. It's going to be a pass. Newsom throws it down the field. Man open, has him at the 20-yard line into the 15. So the Beavers go to the trickery, and they get it. Mike Hass. Newsom's pass complete. So Mike Hass is an excellent receiver. He's a guy that slipped through the fingers. Should have been a scholarship player from the beginning at Jesuit High School. Scholarship player for the Ducks. Well, you know, the word was he wasn't fast enough, but I don't believe you have to be fast to be a receiver. You got to know how to get open, and can you catch the football? Mike Hass can do that. Good throw by Newsom as well. Put it right on the money. First and 10 now inside the red zone for Oregon State, looking to try and tie the game. They'll give it to Jackson. Sidesteps one guy, and he's going to go down. Gain of about a yard, and we've got some good hitting going on down on the field right now. You, you got Newsom and, and Finnessy going at it. You got the linebackers with Jackson and Jerry Madsen going at it. That's football. You see, Finnessy's a corner, Joe, that, that can play either. I, I, I think he can play backer or safety. He's a tough guy. Newsom and Hass go to the top of the screen. That's bringing the pressure this time to the end zone, and it is almost intercepted by Keith Lewis and knocked away. That was a great play by Keith Lewis, but it's a better play when you make the interception. You have to make that play, because right now Oregon State still has a chance to put points on the board. As a safety, this is an opportunity, a golden opportunity to shut this team out right here, make this play. Ball just kind of lofted up there. And a third and nine. First in the Pac-10. Lewis shifts to the top. Newsom's down low. Anderson looking to that side. Throws it short, and it's dropped by Steven Jackson. And the field goal unit will come on. Well, Derek Anderson's upset because that's a perfect pass. Jackson dropped the football, missed opportunities. I keep saying it. Those are your chances to score. Not touch, uh, not field goals, but touchdowns. Anderson's had a couple of drops. A couple of drops. He's playing very well here at Austin Stadium in front of 58,000 people. Again, the Beavers haven't played in front of a crowd bigger than 39,000 this year, and that was an 80,000 seat Memorial Stadium at Cal. Villanini comes on, he sends it up, and nice hard kick is through. Good, and the Beavers back on the board with the field goal. They trail it by four. Joe, what's killing the, with the Ducks right now is the, is the third down conversion, the third long. You know, somehow, some way, if you see this ball kick right down the upright, and that's right down the middle. That's how you make field goals. But on third and long, you have to find a way to stop the Oregon State offense. You got to get off the field. You got to get that power offense off the field. Beavers went 52 yards, eight plays, 223 in the 29-yard attempt is good by Kirk Yulini. You also might have been an Oregon Duck. He was actually here and didn't feel like he was getting an opportunity, so he went to Corvallis, and he's done a great job for the Beavers as a Lou Groza Award finalist. Hey, fans, Dairy Mart, Pepsi, and Southwest Airlines are teaming up to send you and the guest 
to the Pac-10 Men's Basketball Tournament in March at the Staples Center in Los Angeles. The winner receives two tickets to the tournament, airfare for two, and hotel accommodations. See the Ducks try and defend their Pac-10 Tournament Championship in Los Angeles at the Staples Center. Go to your local Dairy Mart and sign up today. Hard to believe basketball is here. The Ducks are already 1-0 on the season. There were students uh, lined up outside Matt Court last night, Anthony, at 1.30 in the afternoon for a basketball game in November on a 35-degree day. <laughs> on a cold day. Oh, those guys aren't cold. They have paint on to keep them warm. No, they look cold. Hey, you know, the thing is, you got to have a body to do that. Well, now. if you're going to do the paint, you can't act like you're cold. No. I mean, you know. Well, that's the difference between the West Coast kids and the East Coast kids. The East Coast kids can do that. Yeah. They're used to that cold weather. They paint up and they act like it's not cold. <laughs> I mean, you can't do the scarf and the hat and then the paint. You got to make a pick. You can sit there and shiver right now. Scoring drive brought to you by Carl's Jr. Beavers did a nice job, and they get the field goal. And they trail at 14 to 10. Been a very good Civil War so far. You know, in my playing days in Oregon, I, I never played in a close Civil War game. We always blew them out. I was fortunate to have that. But now it's exciting for the fans to see these, these, these close games especially for the team that wins. Three and three over the last six years. A little pooch kick. Ducks come up to take it. Take it at the 20. Shaw to the outside, and he takes it across the 30. And another hit way out of bounds. And the Ducks will start at the 34-yard line. 14 yards on the return by Ryan Shaw. You know, I don't understand that pooch kick. I, I'm, I'm not a believer in the pooch kick. I like to get the ball down. Kick it back deep. Kick it out of the end zone if you can. Neither team willing to kick the ball deep today. Well, the thing about it is the returners are still getting the football. You know, so, so kick it deep. Let them run an extra 20 yards. First and 10 for Oregon at the 34. Clemens going to throw it. Here comes some pressure. The screen was set up, but the receiver went down. Terrence Whitehead never got out of the backfield. I think Oregon State was kind of sniffed that play out. They knew it was coming. But there were too many defensive linemen that weren't rushing Clemens. They were standing back around Terrence Whitehead. Clemens 5 of 11 on the day for 57 yards. Oregon has done more on the ground. They have 17 carries for 100 yards, which is a great output against this Oregon State defense. A couple of touchdowns for Kellen Clemens here in the first half of his first Civil War as a starter. Here's Whitehead. And he'll pick up five yards to the 39-yard line. A solid carry, a solid run by Terrence Whitehead. Again, they're going to the counter play. Oregon State has to stop the counter play. It takes time. Terrence Whitehead's finding that hole. Does a nice job of cutting up field, running somebody over at the same time. He gets a positive yards. Third down and a short five. More like a long four. Back to the throw. Quick drop. Goes to Parker. It's incomplete. He got hit big time by Bill Swancutt, and Oregon's going to have to punt the football. Well, that's a three-step drop, and he's still getting to it. <laughs> Talk about speed from Swancutt. He's dropping. He's throwing it right now. Swancutt had to be untouched, and he was. He just dove right over Terrence Whitehead. Great nice play. play. Great play. And Oregon going to punt the football. Beavers almost get to it. It's not a good punt. Clayson going to take it to 30. And fumbles the football. It's on the ground, and Oregon has it. Oregon has it at the 37-yard line. Special teams. <laughs> you said it. You can say it over and over again, Joe. Both teams got to play good on special teams. And the winner of this game is going to be determined by special teams. Protect the football. You can't give it up. You gotta protect it. Almost looked like he might have had a knee down. Another look at it. 
Well, the ball right now is not tucked away. You can't tell from that angle, but I think the ball came out right before he went down. Kyle Weatherspoon had the recovery. And a big break for the Ducks. See if they try to hit the home run right away. Clemens, the pump, looking down. Williams, out of bounds. Good coverage over there by Mitch Houston coming over from the safety spot. There's a free safety. That was a great play by Mitch because he was playing very smart. He didn't go with that pump that Clemens had. Clemens pumped to the right and throws to the left. Mitch was just going to the right right away. Had a beat on the football, chance for an interception. So second and 10 after the break. Can Oregon take advantage of the turnover? To be a good football team, you have to take advantage of, of breaks like this, of turnovers. Capitalize on Oregon State's mistakes. Bucks are going to get man coverage for Sandy Parker. They're going to run the ball to Rosario. Takes it on second and 10 and 35. Ducks this year, Anthony, uh, going back through the plays this year, they've run the ball on second and 10 about 80% of the time. Yes, they have. They, you know, they've, they've tried to sneak some stuff in. And at the beginning of the season, you'd say, okay, they're trying to sneak something in. But they're still doing it at the end of the season, the last game of the year. So there's tendencies that you have to worry about that, you know, Andy Lugway has to think about, is that a tendency that I have? Do I, can I break that? Well, trying to get that manageable third down situation. And the Ducks have a third and eight. Quick off the line is Swancutt. And Clemens under pressure, and he goes back, and he fumbles the football. And Oregon State has it. See what the referees say. Referee still deciding, talking about it. And it's Oregon State football. Kevin Clemens gives it right back to the Beavers. That's a defense making a play, and it's a quarterback, you gotta protect the football. If you're not gonna get, you're gonna get sacked, tuck it away. This ball is out, it's a good call by the, uh, by the officials. Juan Edwards with the recovery. The Beavers have great field position here with 3.24 to go in the half. So they get a break and they do not take advantage of it. Anderson's going to throw it. Plenty of time. Way downfield. Mike Hass is there. And the ball is not thrown anywhere close to him. You know, that was a, a poorly thrown ball. And Derek Anderson usually can throw a lot better than that. Either that ball got caught in the wind, which is there, there's not a whole lot of wind, or he really didn't get his body into, into that football. See the wind again coming out of the northeast today. Right off the hills that are covered with snow here, right outside of Austin Stadium, the Coburg Hills. Very early snowstorm here in the Eugene area last week. More time to throw, and misses his receiver. It'll be third and 10 now for the Beavers. Well, the Ducks right here have to play tough defense to get off the football field. Third down, good field position. You have to convert, you gotta get your offense back on the field. The same, at the same time, Oregon State needs to keep moving the chains. The official stats have two for five on third down, but I can stand here and remember three yeah. at least, so that's not a correct number. And the Beavers on third and ten. Here comes the blitz. Anderson looking deep to the end zone. And Mike Haas can't quite get it. I say to the end zone, I shouldn't have uh, said to the end zone, of course. Haas was streaking to the end zone towards the end zone and uh, comes up incomplete. I'll tell you, Mike has is an excellent receiver. We're talking about he wasn't fast enough. Well, he's running away from the defender right now. And he was open. He made that break, and I thought he was going to turn it upfield and see if Anderson could get it out to him. So both teams not able to take advantage of the turnovers. Justin Finnessy is deep. Carl Toby will punt it. And this is a good punt. Headed towards the corner, and it'll go out of bounds. So very good punt by Carl Toby. And they'll mark this one at the 15-yard line. Nice job by Carl Toby. He was an eighth in the conference in punting this year. At that time, he got it done, 41 yards and no return. 
Well, right here in this situation, this is what the Beaver defense wants. Have the team backed up on the 15-yard line and play the Beaver, Beaver, Beaver football, Beaver defense. Two fifty-seven to go here in the second quarter. Terrence Whitehead has really been the guy for the Ducks right now, running the football like crazy. Oregon, that's really where the offense is coming from right now. Well, uh, Terrence Whitehead is doing a great job of seeing the field, finding the open sp sp spaces, and that's Kitty Washington doing the same thing that Terrence Whitehead does. Whitehead gets it again, and he gets up to the 20-yard line. And it'll be a gain of about five yards on first down. Now, there's a great first down play. Pick up five. That's what you want to do. And they don't have to worry about second and ten. And Oregon keeps coming back to that same counter play. Oregon State hasn't stopped it yet. And we'll see it until Oregon State figures, figures a way to, to stop this or at least slow it down. Ducks again going to get man coverage on Sammy Parker on the top of your screen. Clemens going to be hit and dropped. Back to the original line of scrimmage at the 15-yard line. And now a third and ten coming up for the Ducks. Well, right now they're looking for the Oregon was looking for the quarterback draw. Oregon State has a very fast football team. They're trying to trying to run a draw. He was just starting to get to him. Ducks have done a good job protection-wise early on, but Oregon State's starting to make a little push, Anthony. Yes. Third and ten. Three of seven today. Clemens gonna throw it. Protection's good this time over the middle. Williams was there, but Clemens didn't get it to him. And Oregon's gonna have to punt now with 1.37 to go. So those passes right there, Clemens wants to connect that. When Demetrius Williams is open right there, he has his defender beat. This ball has to be connected. Converting the first down. Paul Martinez standing at his goal line. A high punt. Not a great punt, but takes an Oregon roll. Back and a, a big Oregon roll to the 40 yard line. 45 yards on the kick, no return. 125 to go. 45 yards on the big kick. Big break there no for return. the Ducks. Big break. <laughs> we talk about that, that football not being round. It took a positive roll for the Oregon football team. Now it'll be interesting to see this Oregon State's offense, the two minute offense. They're not really known for the two-minute offense, but Derek Anderson does a nice job of spreading the football around. I, I, I can see the tight ends being a big factor in this drive right here. Anderson's already got 200 yards passing in the first half. Beavers only have one touchdown, though, to show for it, and one field goal. Ducks lead at 14 to 10, 125 to go. He's going to throw it again over the middle to his tight end, and it's caught. Ducks had three guys around the ball, but the guy in white makes the catch. Again, going to the tight ends. Tight ends are a big factor. They become a bigger factor for the Oregon State's offense. Beavers go to the no huddle. Still have two timeouts left. Anderson, he goes down. Not the most mobile quarterback, and he goes back down at the 49-yard line. To correct myself, the scoreboard shows Oregon State with one timeout left. One timeout left, and that keeps the clock at 102, and they use a timeout. And it is their third and final timeout. That hurt Oregon State, that sack right there. They had a chance to move the football, at least get in field goal range. And right now, with that sack, Again, you're, you said Derek Anderson's not very mobile. He's not. When he feels pe pressure, he's usually going to go down. Coming up at halftime today, a little tribute to Oregon Senior. We'll also take a look at the bowl outlook. I've spent about 60 hours this week trying to figure it out, so hopefully that'll pay off at halftime. Highlights and stats as well here in the 107th Civil War. Fifty-eight thousand fans, the largest crowd in the history of the Civil War. 
The Beavers talk about trying to keep Dare, keep uh, Igor Olshansky out of their backfield, but so far he's getting to the quarterback. Well, Igor is doing a great job of beating one on one, beating the center. I mean, you got to be that. You got to be a dominant player if you can beat one guy. And he, Igor is doing two things: he's stopping the run and he's getting to the quarterback. He's really up for this game, and he's still playing. You got to keep playing now. The game's not over. But with plays like that that Igor showed. That's a positive for the Ducks defense. Igor with three sacks on the day. Second and 18 for Oregon State. Ducks going to rush the four. Good protection. Now Anderson's got to scramble out. And they get to him at the 45. Devin Long. <laughs> That's the, that's the speed of Devin Long, a defensive end. The guy can get around the corner, Joe, and chase the quarterback down. That's what you want. Again, Derek Anderson's not that fast. He does a nice job right here, stepping up for a second. But now he's running for his life. Now the Beavers in no hurry. They may just take a shot at it, a home run ball here. There's 13 on the play clock. Ball's at the 45. They're going to hand it off to Jackson. And he's hit immediately and dropped. And that'll be the final play of the first half. The Beavers have minus three yards rushing. And that is why Oregon leads this football game at halftime 14 to 10. The Civil War. Quite a battle here in the first half. As the Ducks go to the locker room in their lightning yellow, Anthony. Some thoughts, what do you think? Well, it's a great play by both teams. I think the game is far from over. You gotta keep playing. The team that comes out on top is gonna play the second half with the excitement, it's emotion, and controlled emotion. No penalties. And who will take advantage of the other team's mistakes? Each team had opportunities in the first half and weren't able to do it. Big key coming up in the second half. Let's go down to uh, the field. Bobby the Bishop has Mike Bellotti. Yes, I have, I have Coach Mike Bellotti. An unbelievably intense ball game, Coach. Your defense is playing their guts out. 30 minutes left. What are you going to say to the guys at halftime? Well, I'm saying that we, uh, we got a little sloppy at the end. Did, didn't take advantage of field position the defense gave us. The defense responded great on the sudden change. We turned the ball over. We need to keep playing really hard. we got 30 more minutes. All right, Coach. Good luck second half. Thank you. All right, guys. Back up to you in the booth. Thanks, Bobby. Oregon leads the Civil War 14 to 10 on a gray, cold November day in Autzen Stadium. I've been to a lot of them where it's been a lot worse than this. We're back after this. We are at halftime in Eugene. 14 to 10, the Oregon Ducks lead the Oregon State Beavers. In what was a very hard fought, solid first half of play. Both teams, I think, are playing well. Each team turned the ball over, but the other team not able to take advantage of that turnover, Anthony. So really, it's been pretty even if you talk about that. The big difference, I guess, the four points, Oregon has been able to run the ball, and Oregon State has not been able to. And also the penalties. I think Oregon State got a hurt in that one series when Oregon scored because of penalties. They got Oregon got all the way down the field because they hurt themselves. Oregon State hurt themselves. Shoot yourself in the foot. You can't do it in a game like this. Let's go ahead and take a look at the first half highlights brought to you by Oregon Community Credit Union. And Oregon State came out on the first drive after they stopped Oregon on a three and out. And Steven Jackson made a big play, and then they got in the end zone. Uh, Jackson carried it from three yards out as he did most of the work on that drive. Well, yeah, you're looking at the first drive, and it was to number 34, Steven Jackson, to the superstar. Now he slowed down a little bit. Oregon has stopped him a little bit, but yet he's a, he's a man you have to watch the whole game. Early on, Kellen Clemens was tucking the ball down and running the football. He had a lot of yards doing that and set up a couple of scores as well. That's another weapon that Oregon has, and then he paid it off with a nice screen pass to Terrence Whitehead. Well, they're doing a lot of positive things on that last series. Running the football, and Clemens was, was playing with a lot of poise, using an athletic ability to get the extra yards. This is the drive that Oregon picked up some big penalties and uh, had a nice run here by Kenny Washington, turning it up for a seven-yard gain. And then Demetrius Williams in the end zone with a nice catch in the corner. And that gave Oregon a 14 to seven lead and uh, they had some opportunities. Got a fumble in Oregon State territory, as I mentioned, couldn't take advantage of it. Still hold the 14-10 lead though. You know, and it's still gonna come down to both teams playing smart. 
There's still a lot of emotion. The emotion's not as high as it was the first part of the game, but you got to play smart the rest of the game. And, you know, fans always try to say, well, Oregon State's better this year or Oregon's better this year. You don't really know until you <laughs> yeah. get to the game until you can match the teams up. These are two very even teams. On paper, it looks like Oregon State has the notch, but when you play in the Civil War, it's a whole different ball game. Oregon leading it by four here at halftime in Eugene on a, just a great day for the Civil War. Boy, Anthony, you remember the rain and the wind oh, and yes. all kinds of crazy things. Well, today we just have some clouds and a cool day, not affecting the game, and the players deciding it on the field, leading at 14-10, the Oregon Ducks. And welcome back to Eugene, everyone, here at halftime. The Ducks leading at 14-10 over the Oregon State Beavers, and uh, quite a day in the Pac-10 and, and around the country when it comes to college football. We've already seen Michigan beat Ohio State. That really helps out USC. Well, it helps out a lot because USC, everybody was talking about, you know, they lost to number two because Ohio State was, was moving up. But now they are number two. Yeah, they are number two. And you can see USC is taking care of their end of the bargain with a big, big half against UCLA, 33 to two. And looks like USC will move into the position of playing in the Sugar Bowl. Stanford, surprisingly, over California 10 0. Well, what happened to the offense for Cal? Cal has, they can put some points up, but right now they're not. It's the big game. You never know what's going to happen. And all of this will affect where Oregon and Oregon State go in the bowl season. Now, Anthony, I, as I said, I spent the entire week trying to figure it out. <laughs> the best that I can come up with is that if two teams get to the BCS, the winner of this game is going to the Holiday Bowl. At the very least, the winner is going to the Sun Bowl. If you lose, Oregon State probably going to get to the Inside Bowl, Oregon probably to the Las Vegas Bowl. Now, Stanford beating Cal will throw everything out of whack because <laughs> Stanford and Cal both have to get another win. Uh, Stanford needs two wins to be bowl eligible. So we'd have to wait for Stanford to see what they did against Notre Dame. If they lost to Notre Dame and Cal loses to Stanford today, neither one of those teams will be able to go to a bowl game. Joe, how long did it take you to figure this out? Well, you know, it's my, ma my <laughs> master's it, thesis. Well, and, you know, it's true. It, it, anything can happen. But as the football team, you're looking at Oregon, Oregon State, right now they have to control their own destiny. Uh, and, and yeah. If they win a football game, then they have a chance to play in the, in the best bowl game, which is the Holiday Bowl. But they have to control their own destiny by winning the game first. There is a lot to play for, especially now with USC moving up and uh, probably going to get in that national title game if they can beat Oregon State here right. in a couple yeah. weeks. But still, that should maybe, maybe set up a, a game between the winner of this game with Nebraska in the Holiday Bowl. So we'll have to see how it all plays out. But also, pretty exciting. Oregon State still has to play USC right, right. at the end of the season. Have to see what happens there. So uh, plenty of action to come. It's been an exciting day in college football, all the rivalry games everywhere. And we've got a great one here in Eugene with the Ducks leading it by four here at halftime. Welcome back, everyone. As we get ready to start the second half of football, Anthony, it's getting grayer and grayer. Uh, is it going to snow? I don't know, but whoever loses is going to be really dark, Joe. <laughs> it's going to be a dark day. Time now for our halftime stats brought to you by Budweiser. And boy, Anthony, a little bit, you can't off figure out the Pac-10. Oregon State comes in being able to run the ball. Minus two yards. Oregon hasn't been able to run the ball a whole lot lately. Got about almost 100. Well, you got to circle that minus two yards for for Oregon State rushing to hold Stephen Jackson. That's incredible. I didn't think you could hold him like that. But again, there's another half to play. He could come out and get 100 yards in this half. Derek Anderson with 215 through the air. Actually, Derek doesn't have all those yards because James Newsom has 40 of them on a trick play. So Derek Anderson, though, is still having a nice day. He's 11 of 21 for 183 yards. But it's coming down to special teams, Joe. Jerry Matson, number 52, laying the hat. And we understand that Harvey Witten is at uh, local hospital, and they're, he's there for precautionary reasons. They say that he has been able to move his extremities, and uh, they're taking a look at him right now. Hope to get more information on him later as Jared Siegel sends it. Kind of a squibber, and it goes out of bounds, and they'll start at the 35-yard line. You know, I don't know if he tried to squib that kick, but again, I'm not a believer in the, in the squib kick. Get it deep, get it up in the air, allow for the time for your, your, your kickoff guys to get down the field. Well, Anthony, neither team is willing to kick the ball deep. Either I, one. I don't know why. Jared was kicking into a little bit of a win. Well, the Beavers with great starting position at the 35. It's like a personal foul penalty. If you, if you figure the 20-yard line is the average starting spot. 
Steven Jackson. No game. I think the Beavers probably went in and said, hey, we need to go back to what we do best, and that's get Steven Jackson the ball. And run the football. But again, you got to look at what Oregon State's been doing well, and that's Derek Anderson throwing the ball down the field. They're not going to leave that alone. They're going to try to get Steven Jackson on board, you know, with plays like this. But you got to stick with what's, what's, what's working, and that's Derek Anderson throwing the football. Second down and 10. Anderson going to throw it, looking down the field, and he throws it short to James Newsom. Newsom had a big play. Anderson would have got it to him. He's got a big smile on his face. He knows it. He had a big play. He knows he was going to some, for some positive yards on that. He had, I think he had Justin Finnessy beat on the deep end. Derek Anderson just didn't get it up in the air. Kind of skipped it like you're skipping rocks against the river on the river. Almost came up with it. Third and ten for the Beavers. There's still about 10,000 fans out in the parking lot. Oh, I don't know how you could ever want to miss any of this. It's a civil war. Anson back to throw, looking deep to Hass, and it's over the top of his head. And a quick three and out. Nice play by Aaron Gibson. Uh, you know, you talk about Hass. He's not a speed guy. And that's a great job by Aaron Gibson getting up, pressing him, using your speed to run with Mike Hass. So a quick three and out for the Beavers. And Carl Toby will go back to punt. And Stephen Moore is back to return for Oregon for the first time in three weeks, three games, I should say, with uh, out from an injury, Justin Finnessy had been doing a great job. Had some big returns against Cal. Toby's kick is going to be returnable at the 25. Moore gets outside. And he'll go down to the 37-yard line. And a pretty good break for the Ducks not to pick up a penalty there. <laughs> blocking in the back. Yeah, there was. The Ducks got away with one right there, a straight block in the back. Sometimes you're going to miss those. I know Stephen Moore is excited about putting returns. Returning punts, and he has a chance to make some plays. Nice block and good positive yards. Chad Scott took a little push. And Oregon will start at the 37-yard line, so good field position for Oregon. Kellen Clemens bringing him out. Only five completions, 5 of 14, 57. He's run the ball real well. I've seen him play sharper, throwing the football. Well, you're right, and his players have been open, Joe. He's been throwing the ball. They've been open, but he hasn't got it there. He hasn't connected. See if the Ducks try to run the ball here in the second half the outside and Whitehead will go down after a gain of about four to the 42 yard line I'm surprised at the uh, emotion right now in the crowd I mean it's uh it always I guess it always surprised me maybe because of the civil War. the uh, stadium as I mentioned right now you've got I don't know maybe 10,000 people out Trying to move in from their halftime festivities. Well, they're trying to go to the, you know, they're at their cars staying warm. <laughs> you know, they didn't want to come out in the elements, so they've been waiting as long as they can. Clemens shifts it up down to five on the play clock. Ducks still shifting it up. Four, three, two, one, and they get it off. Clemens over the middle. Tim down to the 40. Inside the 40 to the 39 yard line. Sammy Parker is slow to get up after laying a block, but Oregon now in Oregon State territory. The well, tight end comes out to play. That tight end. And you know what? I was just getting ready to ask you, Joe, what happened to the Oregon's tight end, Tim Day? You got to get him in the picture, and now he's in the picture. Just a little delay. N nice job of him running down the field, getting extra yards. Now, that right there is uncalled for. It really is. That should have been penalized. He should have been penalized for that. You want to hit somebody, hit them face to face. Joe always say that. Face to face. First and 10 for Oregon at the 39. Looking for some running room and finding a little bit to the 45. Now, I've always wondered when you can see a play like that or the uh, push in the pack on the punt return, you can throw a, put an official up here and have him you know, just light a light on the field. I mean, you can <laughs> see so much more, of course, from the from the press box than you can as an official right down on the field. Well, you know, Sammy Parker getting hit like that. Okay, he's going to remember that before this game's over. And he's going to take a shot at Browner. It's going to go back and forth. 
Usually it's the retaliator that gets caught. And that's one of those things, Anthony, we talk about, keeping your emotions in check and not hurting your football team. Second down and six. Clemens, a lot of time, a lot of time, and now he's going to try and flush away. Now he throws it away and a flag comes out. I think they got Oregon off at the line for holding. Not the part of the field that you want to do that. Protection was good. Clemens just couldn't find an open receiver. Ducks in a max protect with only two receivers out. And it is on Oregon State. Oh. A big penalty on the Beavers. Big penalty. Mike Riley's upset with this one. He's trying to figure out what's going on here. Holding defense. Ten yard penalty from the previous spot. First down. And I look at Oregon State, Joe, being a, a better football team if they didn't get all the penalties that they have. I mean, they really hurt themselves. I mean, you talk about, you know, you have to beat the opponent and don't beat yourself. But Oregon State, over the last, you know, 11 games, they've really just beat themselves up with penalties. That's five now for 60 yards, and they only seem to happen at crucial times. Whitehead up the middle to the 15-yard line. And another first down, or close to the marker for Oregon. See where they mark it. Across the line. And it's right on the marker. They may have to measure this one, Anthony. No, they'll give them the first down. That's and so the Ducks will have the first inside the red zone. That's another counter play that Terrence Whitehead loves to run right now. Be impatient, get through that line of scrimmage. You got to really tip your hat off for the Oregon offensive line, creating some seams and some holes for the running backs. First and ten. This would be a big touchdown. Ducks trying to get a little bit of separation. Williams in motion. They'll give it to Whitehead who goes backwards. Great play by the Oregon State defense. Chaz Scott on the stop. And second and 12 coming up to give him forward progress to the 17-yard line. Well, right here, Terrence Whitehead's going outside. He wants to take that inside, but he didn't have enough time to, to turn it up. That Oregon State's defense is so fast to get to you right now. Right now he wants to go inside. I know he saw 51 Ziegler, but you got you to keep going north and south. Second and 12. A quick drop on the slant to Williams, who couldn't hold it, and the flag comes out, and it'll be an automatic first down if it is on Oregon State. They called him for holding. Defensive holding. Kellen Clemens feeling like, man, that was a opportunity for a touchdown there. Saw it open up. It was. It is on Oregon State. Well, they got to feel like they, they have a target on them, Anthony. Well, <laughs> they really do. It's Pass interference. Defense. Ball will be placed at the spot of the foul. First down. So 16-yard line, or excuse me, the 11-yard line with a first down. As a defensive player, I hate those little nitpick calls from referees for pass interference. I mean, you're looking at that, you know, Demetri Tweezer has a chance to catch the football. He gets held just by his, you know, one little arm, and they call pass interference. Sometimes you got to let the guys play. got to let that let go. The, let, let them play. got to let that go. There's Williams in motion again. Clemens throws it underneath, down to the six-yard line. Smart play by Clemens to get the ball inside like that. Sammy Parker on the reception. Sammy Parker did a nice job of stopping in that zone. Okay, he finds out the zone. You stop in the zone, you don't move. And you're a target. Clemens found the target. Ducks on their opening drive here in the second half. Down to the six yard line. Second down, but they still get a first down. Second and five. Clemens gonna throw it again, little shovel pass. Whitehead, oh, almost gets away and he falls forward for two yards. 
to the four-yard line. And Oregon State knew that play. They knew it was coming. <laughs> they, they knew it was coming, but Terrence Whitehead did a great job of avoiding the first tackle against the shuttle play. Look at the Oregon defenders. They're, they, they keep their eye on Terrence Whitehead. They could have made it a great play. Right there, Richard made a saving touchdown tackle. Third down and three from the four. Football games are won and lost on conversions like this. Clemens on the draw to the end zone. Touchdown, Kelly Clemens on the quarterback draw. Joe, that was huge for Oregon. Take that ball, that whole series, and off of the series and drive that ball all the way and score points. He took a big shot, too. Looks like he's a little hurt. He's going to go straight to the bench. I think he got the air knocked out of him. I think he fell on the football. But you see Tim Day coming in motion. Now he's going right up the middle to make some blocks. Great blocking by the offensive line for Oregon. And boom, he falls on the ball. I think he fell on the, on the shoulder pad or something and knocked the air out of him. Mike, He's all right, though. Mike Delagrange with a great block. The extra point almost blocked, but up and through for Jared Siegel. And Oregon leads it by 11. An opening drive of the second half. You almost feel bad for those fans in the parking lot who missed it. Oregon leads it by 11. Welcome back, everyone. Oregon with the touchdown and the lead, 21 to 10 over Oregon State. A long way to go in this football game. But Oregon does have the lead after a great drive. Derek Anderson going to get his chance now. And helped out again by some Oregon State penalties, Anthony. Again, penalties will hurt you. Oregon State right now is just being killed by, you know, shooting themselves in the foot. They're not giving themselves a chance. Take a look at the Carl's Jr. scoring drive. Kellen Clemens led it. Eight plays, 62 yards, and Clemens gets it on a four-yard run. 4.40 off the clock as we're under 10 now in the third quarter. And Jared Siegel will kick off. Anthony, let's see if they go ahead and try and kick one deep here. I don't know. They should. This one is squibbed again. Hits at the 20. Nice move on the sideline. And a saving tackle made. That was just a fantasy, wasn't it? Brandon Kennedy's on the return. Another look at it. Keith Lewis over there. 17 yard return on the play. Nice little dip in and dip out. Had some running room. It was actually Justin Andrews yes. who made the stop. And now the fans really making some noise here, trying to make it tough on the Beavers. Derek Anderson still uh, trying to direct the offense. There's five on the play clock. Down to two, and they get the playoff. Anderson down the field, has Newsom. And he's hit immediately by Aaron Gibson. It'll be a gain of about six or seven yards. We'll give him seven on the play. Well, that's what you have to do with Oregon State. Offense is get the ball to Newsom right now. They're having a hard time with Steven Jackson running the football. So throw it to the next best guy, and that's number two. Newsom, he can do some damage with the ball's in his hands. Anderson to throw on second down, has Ewis. And Ewis takes it across the 40 to the 41. So going with that little short passing game. The short passing game to keep the pressure off Derek Anderson. They know that he has problems when the pass rush gets to him. So if you keep it short and quick, get rid of the football, take four or five yards a chunk, they're going to keep working that all the way down the field. They're not going to panic. Oregon State does a great job of not panicking. Keep moving the football. So a first down moves it out across the 40-yard line for Mike Riley's crew. Anderson's going to throw it again. Looking to the outside, it was tipped by Kevin Mitchell. And incomplete. You know, the, the knock on Derek Anderson is always throwing interceptions. He's done a great job of protecting the football this game, of throwing the ball in the right spot. But we see here with pressure. Now he feels pressure. He has to get rid of the football a little faster. Now it's a little high. 
Would have been a catch had not Kevin Mitchell got his hands on it. Second down and 10 now for the Beavers. Steven Jackson is the lone back. Anderson's going to throw it again. Looking for Jackson over the middle, incomplete. And Kevin Mitchell thought he had the football still. Pass is incomplete. Sometimes you can't see that as a player. You're just trying to make a tackle. You don't know that he doesn't have the ball because he, Kevin Mitchell got beat on the play, got beat on the inside. Now he's running to go catch up. And he thinks he has the football trying to make a tackle. They could call that though, Joe, right there. They're trying to control the game. Referees can call that. Third and ten. Anderson, 13 of 27. No interceptions though for Anderson. Throw it again. Here comes the rush a little bit. Got a man open. And they're going to have the first down and more to the 40 and the 38 yard line. Another third down conversion for the Beavers. Third down conversion is killing the Dutch right now. They can't get off the field. Once again, the official stats only had it two of eight, which is not correct. No. And then looking at Derek Anderson right there, he has time to throw the football. You cannot give this young man time. He will hurt you. So the Beavers trying to respond, and that was a big third down play. Looking to get that underneath pass, and they got it. And now they'll hand it off to Jackson to the outside, has a block into the corner, and out of bounds to the 30-yard line. One of Jackson's best runs today, eight-yard pickup. Steven Jackson ran out of bounds by Marley Tucker. Right now, I know Steven Jackson wants the football. He wants it in his hands so he can do something. He don't want to end the game with less than 50 yards rushing. Got him out to the corner that time. And a good looking drive for the Beavers after that conversion. Working that short passing game and then coming back with Jackson. Motion Ewis. Here comes the blitz. Looking out there, Jackson has it. And he'll be run out of bounds at the 24 yard line and a first down. There's some words being spoken down oh, there. Yeah, with, with Keith Lewis and, and Stephen Jackson, those two like to talk, they like to get, get busy. They, they love to go against each other. Been doing it for a long time. First down at the Oregon 24. So it's a first down at the 24. 7.30 to go, halfway through the third quarter. Jackson lined up right behind Anderson this time, and he's going to throw it. Here comes Quinn Dorsey at him, looking to the end zone, and it is overthrown. And a flag comes down. Two flags come down. It'll be a pass interference on Justin Finnessy, and it'll be half the distance to the goal, and an automatic first down. See, that's where Justin Finnessy has to remember that he can use his legs a lot better than reaching for a defender to try to grab him. Use your legs, keep pumping your arms, and that will enable you to catch up to the receiver. Joe, young corners, get they get scared, nervous when a guy's in front of them, and they're trying to catch up. Pass interference, defense, 15-yard penalty from the previous spot, automatic first down. So you're trying to catch up. you got to keep pumping your arms. Your arms and legs will take you to the football. You can't grab. A good call by the officials there, grabbing some material. That seems to be the one thing they look for is if you grab on the jersey or any cloth, you're going to get called for it. Those referees are watching those corners for their hands to be reached out. Ball at the nine yard line. Oregon State with three receivers to the near side. And they'll give it to Jackson going the other way, looking for the corner, and knocked out of bounds after a yard loss. Keith Lewis over there. They've renewed their. They're, they're talking again. Their discussion. They're saying, uh, you know, how, how's the weather today, Stephen? Not bad, Keith. But right here, Keith Lewis comes and tries to knock him out of bounds, which he does. Then you want to stand over him and talk to him a little bit. David Martin also on the stop. Second down and goal from the 11. Anderson's going to throw it, looking over the middle, and it is tipped and almost caught and almost intercepted. 
Had a little of everything on that play. Those are the plays that you, you just want so badly to just back up and rewind and do over. Chance to have the ball in your hands. Oregon State's really dropped a lot of passes. I mean, they're, they're lucky that, that this wasn't an interception. Third and goal from the 11. Nine play drive. They've done 61 yards. Here come the Ducks on the blitz. They're bringing everybody. They don't get to them, and it's incomplete. No flags come out, and Oregon State will send the field goal team on. That was a great stand by the Oregon Ducks defense. Not allow this. High-powered Oregon State offense to get in the end zone. They brought everybody, Anthony. Everybody, and everybody was playing well. Stephen Moore did a great job reaching his hand around in the pocket, getting it out, covering a great receiver. Yeah, go ahead and reset the play clock. It's going to be a 28-yard attempt for Kirk Ilanima. Kind of a tough angle, but he's been solid this year. Snap is down, kick is up, and that one looks like it's going to be through, and it is. 61. So 61 yards, but they get the three, and so the lead is eight. Beavers can't get in the end zone. They got on their first drive. They haven't been there yet today after that. Welcome back, everyone. The Beaver Brown celebrating the Oregon State field goal to cut the lead to eight. 7.02 to go here in the third quarter. Expecting this one to be a fight, and it is. And Fan State Farm Insurance is a major supporter of women's athletics, and they're pleased to bring you the University of Oregon women's sports calendar and the big basketball tournament coming up Thanksgiving weekend at Mac Court. Oregon against Kansas the first night, and then against NC State the second night. Sacramento State also there. That's the uh, team of Dan Muscatel, the former Oregon assistant. And the Oregon women off to a great start, having uh, a win over the number nine team in the country, LSU, at Matt Court a week ago. And that Oregon-NC State game, of course, we'd love to see you at Matt Court. And if you're not able to make it, we'll have it for you on the Oregon Sports Network. Clem was just uh, ready for a nap. <laughs> Taking a big yawn. Very, very relaxed. <laughs> very relaxed. Well, that's good to see. Washington and Shaw. Kenny Washington and Ryan Shaw are deep for Oregon. And he'll name it again with the squibber. And they'll let it go through. Ball's loose and it's picked up. And Washington has room. Now to the 30, the 40. Out to the 50. Stiff arm. 45, 40. And out of bounds at the 37 yard line. Joe, you made a point earlier in the program about the special teams and the play of Kenny Washington. And I tell you what, he has showed up today, you know, in the last couple of games, picking up the squib and finding the seam. Great blocking downfield. Dante, everybody making, and him doing some great jobs and getting some extra yards. Nice play. Made a nice move and didn't let the kicker get him. <laughs> you can't let the kicker catch you. Can't make a tackle. For goodness on a sakes, the Oregon State kicker's been wearing sweatpants all day. He's not even wearing his football pants until he has to go in the game. He's like a pitcher in baseball. Yes. Can't let the, the kicker tackle you. Tim Day goes in motion. Ducks at the 35. Clemens to throw it. Looking down the field. Now he's going to run. And he's going to pick up just a couple of yards to the 33 yard line. Everybody covered. Great play by Oregon State's secondary of covering the receivers. Want to get some good receivers in Demetrius Williams and Sammy Parker. But Clemens does a nice job of looking downfield, nowhere to throw the football, take positive yards, just like a running play, get about three yards on the play. Second down and a long seven. Sammy Parker, pretty quiet today so far. At the top of your screen. Here comes the blitz, Ducks run on it. Whitehead, 30, can he break a tackle? Close to the first down at the 26-yard line. Fans wanted a penalty because the Brandon Browner's been all over Sammy Parker today. <laughs> yes. 
He's been trying to take out Sammy Parker, and he's going to get flagged for it pretty soon. He's got to watch himself. Right here, Terrence Whitehead does a great job of the vision. The offensive line, Stice number 74, making great blocks. Nice play. Third and less than a yard. Big conversion coming up here for the Ducks. Whitehead with 64 yards. They'll get a chance to make a 65. They'll have a first down. 66 yards for him on the play. And it'll be a first down at the 23 yard line. Those big guys up front are moving the football. Driving the Oregon State's defensive line back. Defensive line for Oregon State's not that big, Joe. Beavers have no rushing yards. Of course, some of that is the sacks Derek Anderson has taken. Oregon with 127. First and 10 from the 24. Clemens going to throw it. Comes the pressure. Steps up. Now he's got some time. And he's going to run it. 20. Puts his head down. And will pick up eight yards to the 16-yard line. I tell you, Clemens is a tough quarterback. Got a young man from the country. Kind of a cowboy, used to dealing with the cattle, the sheep, or whatever else. He's a tough, he's a tough guy, Joe. He's going to tuck this ball in. You know what? He's going to try to deliver a blow in, into the defender. Sammy Parker and Brown are having quite a matchup. These guys are going at it every play. Every there play. You go. That's, what I'm, that's, that's happening every single that's play. That's what you want to see. A receiver getting after it, blocking for his other Ball carriers. Ducks going to run it. Whitehead stacked up short of the first down at the 15 yard line. Tried to cut it back to pick up the first, but couldn't get it there. Well, in this third and short, if you're not going to run the football, you got to look for number 85, Tim Day. Big factor in this football game. I don't think the other linebackers for Oregon State can stay with Tim Day. Ducks have not run the option yet today either. We've seen that a lot earlier in the year. Third and short. Ducks a little slow getting the play in. And they'll break the huddle with 10 on the play clock. High formation. Five on the play clock. Gonna throw it on third. Out to the Rosario. Freshman from Dayton, Oregon, has a touchdown in his first Civil War. That is huge for a freshman to come through, take the football on a pass, Joe, and find the pay dirt, find the end zone. Right now, everybody's focusing on Tim Day. Talked about Tim Day. Clements finds Dante, and Dante gets in the end zone. All started by Kenny Washington's kickoff return. Jason Fife in to hold for Jared Siegel. 3.20 to go here in the third quarter. Snap is good. Kick is up. Kick is good. Oregon leads it by 15 with 3.20 to go here in the third quarter. Can they hold on in the 107th Civil War in front of 58,000 at Autzen Stadium? Here we go. The final 18 minutes and 20 seconds of football, and can Oregon hold on? A 15-point lead, that was a big drive. Started out by Kenny Washington on the kickoff return, and then Kellen Clemens making some big plays as well, but Washington really started it. Well, Kenny Washington gave the Oregon offense some spark and some field position by taking this down there, and then Clemens coming here, looking downfield, nothing near Joe, decides to run, positive yards, now the touchdown to Dante, the freshman, finding Pedro, Pedro, and scores. Another squibber. The ball's touched and the ball is loose. Picked up by Newton at the 20, and that's where the Beavers will start. Pat Loney make it on the return, and that's the kind of thing that'll make your heart jump if you're a Beaver fan. Oh, yes. It's that ball floating around that like that. ball floating around. You got to get on that football. But really good news for the Beaver Nation. 
That ball, is, you got to get on it. Now, don't look at it. Don't look downfield. Don't get that football. He's made an announcement here about Harvey Witten. And we told you earlier, he has movement in his arms and legs. Injured earlier in the football game. And now Oregon State trailing by 15. Do they have to scrap their original game plan and go strictly to the air? Anderson complete to Hass. Turns it up for a gain of eight yards. That underneath route is open. They've had, a, had some drops that have uh, stopped the drives. Yeah, they have, and penalties have stopped the drive. But they know how to move the football with this uh, kind of like a West Coast offense. You get three receivers to the side, and these guys find different zones in the area, and they sit down. 2.46 to go here in the quarter, and the referees want the play clock, I believe, restarted. Well, well then, Quinn Dorsey accidentally kicked the football. <laughs> Quinn size 15 shoe accidentally booted the football, got out of position. Second down is short for Oregon State. They'll give this one to Jackson. He's got the corner. He's got a long ways if he can get there. 40, 50 in Oregon territory and out of bounds at the 37-yard line. Mark it at the 39. You can Eventually, he's going to get one. Well, you cannot let Steven Jackson get outside the defense. That's what happened here. He gets outside the defense. No, Somebody has to contain him. You cannot lose contain. You see Justin Finnessy trying to get outside. Going to create a long running room. There goes Steven Jackson. Before that, the Beavers had 19 carries for zero yards. Now they've got 20 for 32. 39-yard line, and a first down for Oregon State. Anderson's going to throw it. Good protection, looking way downfield, and it is knocked away by Aaron Gibson. That was a nice play by Aaron Gibson. As you see, Hass is complaining. You can't complain on that one. It's a nice job by Aaron Gibson coming over the top, making the play. You can see to the right of your screen, also here comes left of your screen, Derek. Aaron Gibson, one hand, knocks it down. The Hass is complaining, but he got grabbed on the head as the ball was coming in, but sometimes the referees can't see that. Gibson the sophomore and a Fontana, California, second down and 10 now. Five on the play clock, they get it off. Little quick out to Jackson. Tries to make a move, still on his feet. It'll go down after a three-yard gain. It'll be third down and about seven yards to go for Oregon State to pick up the first. So they're trying to give the ball to Steven Jackson in any way they can by running the ball, throwing the, ball, throwing the football real quick. Big play coming up in this football game. Everybody coming to their feet. 1.53 to go in the third quarter. Plenty of time left. Ducks rushing three. Anderson feels the pressure. Now he's going to run it. And he'll go down at the 33-yard line, short of the first down. And Oregon State may opt to go for it here. I think they are, Joe. Four down territory, late in the game, they're going to go for it. I think the Beavers are going to decide to go ahead and go for it here on fourth. And they'll call it four. And the play coming in, and this place is going to be rocking now. Great defense by Stephen, Stephen Moore, staying with Newsom. Fourth and four, you'd think they'd go to their All-American on some sort of a screen pass. Duck showing the pressure, and a flag comes out. Flag comes down, see what it is. It's against Oregon State. False now, start. Now they may have to reconsider. Dead ball, false start. Now it's 
You got to keep your poise at this time. You can't move. Beaver is still going to go for it. Fourth and nine. It's not a do or die situation yet, but it would sure go a long way in this game. Fourth and nine. Jackson rolls out, looking back, cross over the middle. He got his man, a big hit, and he holds on to it. Newsom with a big catch at the 24. Huge catch for the Beavers. Newsom does a great job of holding on to this football. Again, they're going back to the pass of the deep end by Newsom. He hasn't been, now he got depleted on that, but he got up, he held the football. That's an important thing. He took a shot. But he held on to the football. First down. Move the change for Oregon State. Boy, I wonder what would have happened on that play before Oregon State moved when Oregon was going to bring about eight guys. First and ten for the Beavers on a big fourth down conversion. Anderson with time. Looking out and uh, overthrows his receiver. Justin Finnessy saw it coming down looking like a watermelon. Well, if he was on target, Justin Finnessy would have intercepted that football. I don't think Derek Anderson saw Justin Finnessy right there. Sometimes that ball can come out, look like a beach ball, look like a blimp. Finnessy hurt his ankle a little bit hopping around. Sometimes when offensive coaches see that from the press box, they see a, a corner hopping or limping, they may call a play his way. Second and 10, Jackson trying to get outside and nothing doing. He'll go down after a two-yard loss, and that'll be the last play of the third quarter. Anthony, you talked about four quarters. Can the Ducks get it done, leading by 15 going to the final period, but Oregon State, after a big conversion, knocking on the door. What a day it's been as the gray settles in over the Willamette Valley. Who's going to win the 107th Civil War? Welcome back, everyone. Oregon leading at 28-13. They've scored in every quarter. As the Beavers have as well, but Oregon getting touchdowns. Oregon State only getting field goals, and now we're in another situation like that on the third and 13 coming up. Anthony, I don't know if I've ever seen you so animated. I, I'm surprised you haven't jumped out on the field and put your shoulder pads on. Well, I, I, I've turned into a player or a coach when I see certain things on the field. I, you know, you want to get out there, you want to do something about it, and I can't. I'm helpless. Look back at the uh, keys to the game, Anthony, and see how Oregon's doing as we head to the fourth quarter. Control Jackson they have, except for one play. Yeah, I didn't think they're going to stop Jackson, but they're controlling pretty good. And playing with the emotion, Oregon's been playing very smart today, no penalties. And four quarters, Joe, we're going to find out right now if they're going to play for four quarters of football. They've been able to run the ball in every quarter. Now the Duck defenders asking for the noise. Oregon State scored a touchdown on their very first possession of the game, and they have not been able to get into the end zone ever since. Big third and 13 coming up. Newsom is the guy they like to go to, try to find him sitting down in the zone. He's in motion on the near side. Back to throw a little screen pass. It's set up 20, Jackson, and down to the 13-yard line. They're going to mark it right at the marker, it looks like. Let's see where they mark it, and they'll mark it as a first down. First down at the 13, a great call by the Beavers. A great call. Everybody was looking to snooze them. Everybody's looking to the right of the football field, and they throw a little screen pass. And you see Steven Jackson sneaks in. Got some blockers right in front of him. Nothing but open running room right there. Kevin Mitchell and Jerry Matson get over there and save a touchdown. When the ball went out there first, it looked like it was going to be a touchdown. Yeah. First and 10 now for the Beavers. A couple of huge conversions on this drive. They'll give it to Jackson up the middle. And he'll pick up about two yards to the 11-yard line. Stephen Jackson's had a hard time running in the middle of the football 
with uh, with the Oregon defense, big guys like Junior and, and Igor up front, there's not a lot of room or daylight when you're going down the middle of the football team. Ducks leading it by 15. They've been able to move the ball pretty well today against this Oregon State defense, and now the defense trying to preserve it. Anderson to the end zone, or almost to the end zone, to Haas, who gets to the one-yard line and goes down there. Anderson's pass complete to Mike Haas. Oregon State's doing a great job of just finding the open spot in the zone. Mark it at the one-yard line. Boy, you go back to that fourth down conversion. Huge. Fourth and nine kept the drive alive. Now they can cut it to a one touchdown game. Ducks may have to score again, Anthony, to win this football yes, game. Will. High formation now. Motion out of it. They'll give it to. No, they won't give it to Jackson. They'll throw it to the end zone for the touchdown. Pat Loney with the touchdown. And the Beavers will send in the PAT team to cut the lead, try to cut the lead to eight. That was a nice play by Oregon State. A lot of times everybody forgets about the second tight end. The tight end to the right of the screen. Fakes like he's going to block. And that's a linebacker. Ramon Reed has to be smart and think about, hey, who do I have in coverage? You can't look at the backfield. you got to look at your, at your receiver. And the drive featured a fourth and nine conversion and also a third and 13 conversion. Both deep in Oregon territory. And it's an eight point game. Very much in doubt here at Autzen Stadium. Ducks lead it 28 to 20. Welcome back everyone. Oregon State with a big drive, 12 plays and 79 yards. And they've cut the lead to eight. Oregon, though, has been able to move the ball consistently today, Anthony. And it's a matter of whether they stay aggressive or not at this point. Well, and that's surprising because everybody's looking at this Oregon State's defense, and they're the best in the Pac-10. But right now, they're having a hard time stopping Oregon's offense. Paul Martinez has only had to punt the ball three times, as is Carl Toby. Each team only punting the ball three times. Offensive battle here today, 28 to 20. John Daly is going to kick it off. Good play there on the goal line for the Beavers. And Loney getting the touchdown. Daly will kick it off again. It's a little squibber. It's going to hit. Picked up by Shaw. Out across the 30, breaks a tackle to the 40 and to the 43 yard line. Every time it's like almost disaster and it turns out great for the Ducks. Well, that, the last time the Beavers kicked a little squibber, a short kick, it hurt them. And they did the same thing again. Now you kick it to Ryan Shaw. Ryan Shaw does a nice job of staying in bounds. Next thing you know, he's picking up positive yards. So 43 yard line. If the Ducks could punch one in here, they'd make it very difficult on the Beavers. A stop here in Oregon State will have the ball and a chance to tie. Huge series. Biggest series of the year for both football teams. Hit behind the line and dropped as Terrence Whitehead. Well, right now, looking at Oregon State, they feel like they have some momentum. Their defense is playing off their offense. The offense went down and scored some points. Now the defense is, is hyped up, saying, now it's our job to stop this Oregon offense. Second down and 12. Big number 92, Alvin Smith, making the stop. Beavers show like they're going to come off the corner, and they do. Clemens, quick drop over the middle and to Williams, and the flag comes out. It'll be pass interference and a first down for Oregon at the 50-yard line. Well, that was a pass interference right there. That ball was definitely in the air. Looked like uh, Mitch made contact a little too soon. 
It's actually going to be on Lawrence Turner. Yeah, Lawrence Turner gets there a little too early. And there's a discussion, which I'm not sure what the discussion's about. They're saying the ball might have been tipped. That's what they're trying to say. The referees were thinking, was the ball tipped before it got there? And they make the call saying that it wasn't, so they'll mark it at the 50-yard line, and it'll be a first down for Oregon at the 50. 12.49 to go. Pass interference. Defense. Ball will be placed at the spot of the foul. First down. And they will mark it in Oregon State territory, as you can see, at the 49-yard line. On this Oregon offense, what they want to do right now is move the football but take some time off the clock. And in the end, score some points. Clemens with a long count, changing the play at the line with seven on the play clock. Beavers inch up, and Oregon's going to run it. Looking for a little running room, and there is just a little bit. Whitehead. Whitehead for a couple of yards to the 47-yard line. Again, Oregon's looking for some of those seams and those cracks that Terrence Whitehead does a great job of finding. You know, Terrence Whitehead's only about 5'11". Off the line for Oregon, those guys average about 6'4", 6'5". So it's hard for the defenders to see Terrence Whitehead when he's carrying that football. Beavers has done a great job on Sammy Parker today. Only two catches for 13 yards. See if the Ducks try to go to their playmaker. Williams goes in motion. Clemens going to throw it. Good protection, looking. And it is intercepted! Intercepted by the Beavers. Richard Siegler. That's that Oregon State defense making a play when it counts. Breaking on the ball, looking at the quarterback. You can see Richard right to the right of the screen, right in the middle. Kind of a, a bad thrown ball. I think Clemens thought Whitehead was going to go to his right and went to his left. Now you had an interception. And the Beavers have all the momentum right now. Great field position and an opportunity for Oregon. Thrown away on the turnover. Nobody said it was going to be easy. They'll give it to Jackson, who's hit behind the line. He'll put his head down to try and get back to the original line of scrimmage, which I think he did just about. Might have lost a half a yard. But we're going to see here if Oregon State can capitalize on this turnover. Back in the second quarter, Oregon had a turnover and didn't capitalize. And the Beaver offense has not turned the ball over yet today. They had a fumble on a punt return. Yeah. But this is a offense where Derek Anderson has thrown 17 interceptions this year and they have not turned the ball over. Second down and 10. Going to throw it over the middle incomplete for Steven Jackson. Those plays right there kill a coach when those when that ball is in Steven Jackson's hands. He has the opportunity to catch the football and get some positive yards. He doesn't catch it. It's an angle route. Steven Jackson's to the right of the screen. He goes out and then comes underneath. He tried to jump a little bit. He didn't really need to jump for that football. Kind of mess his concentration up. Third and ten. Anderson looking downfield, looking, still looking, and he's going to go down back at the 43-yard line. Give that one to the secondary. That was huge for the secondary to come in and make the play. Oregon State did capitalize on the interception for Richard Siegler. Now the Ducks can get good field position from a, a positive punt return. Derek Anderson's dropping back. Now there's nothing downfield. He's running. Now, you can't hold the ball that long. Now, you're looking at the secondary. This time, they're all over the place. Carl Toby punting from his own 30-yard line. And it's a very high kick and a good kick. And it's caught by the Beavers at the 13-yard line. And Oregon will start there. So a very good punt by Carl Toby. No return. 43 yards on the kick. 
And the Ducks need to move the ball, work some clock, and try and get some more points on the board to get out of here with a victory. Welcome back, everyone. It's an eight-point lead with 10.29 to go here in the fourth quarter. There's never been an overtime game in the history of the Civil War, although there have been some ties. Matter of fact, there have been four 0-0 ties, if you can believe that. Hey, Duck fans, join the Alumni Association in Vegas for the Las Vegas Showdown Basketball Tournament. Enjoy three days and two nights in Vegas, as well as two great basketball games. Oregon will play Alabama on Saturday, December 20th, followed by Auburn against UNLV. For more information, call the UO Alumni Association at 346-5656, and we'll see you in Vegas. And heck, you don't have to stay for the Auburn UNLV game. You can head out to the casinos. Just go down there to see your Ducks play. 13-yard line. Ducks come out with a real tight formation, and they'll shift. Rosario in the backfield as the fullback. Clemens going to throw it. Pressure. He's got a man wide open, and he can't get it to him. Tim Day was wide open. So those are plays right there, Joe, that you have to connect. You have to connect in a game like this. There's no... <laughs> No other things you can do but hit your tight end when he's wide open, running down the field. Clemens does a great job avoiding the rush, steps up in the pocket. He may have got a hit a little bit as he was throwing the football. Oh, you have to connect that. And you can see on that camera shot, there is nothing but green in front of Tim Day. There's a broken coverage by the Beavers and a big missed opportunity. Second and 10. They'll pitch it and run it. Washington trying to use his speed. Out across the 15, and a nice play on the outside by Lawrence Turner, and it'll be third and long. Well, Lawrence Turner shows some great speed. Can you watch it? And there's not no slow guy out there. There was a lot of running room that Lawrence Turner had to make up, and he got there in a hurry. Here comes the rush. Still alive and gets it out there for Sammy Parker. They mark it for the first down at the 25 yard line. A big third down conversion. Clemens did a great job of stepping up in the pocket. They're sitting the blitz. They're sitting everybody after Clemens. Clemens steps in there, hangs in there. Parker does a nice job of catching the football for a first down. The thing about that is Parker knew where the first down marker was, and he was right there. Then he's telling you, first down, move the chains. First and 10 now for Oregon as we're under 10 to 9.20 to go in the game. Ducks will run it. Looking for a hole. And there's a big hole. Washington, does he have the speed? Out across the 50 to the 45-yard line. And a flag is down at the 43-yard line. Anthony, you're jumping on my back. I think you think it was face mask. Well, yeah, I, I thought it was face mask. I thought Kitty Washington was going to break it. I thought I was going to give you a piggyback ride. <laughs> Those type of plays, when you see a guy like this, Kitty Washington, in open field, running down the sideline, you think it's going to be a touchdown? That is a face mask right there. Let's see what a variety of face masks Yes, he's still holding on to that face mask. They're only going to give him a five-yarder, I think. See if they mark off the 15 or not. Incidental grasping of the face mask. Five yard penalty from the end of the run. First down. So incidental face mask is only five yards. What? Boy, I'm not so sure about that. Well, the thing about incidental is that, you know, he can put his hand in the face mask the long as he takes it off. Right there, you see, he's still holding on to it. He's tackling by the face mask. That is not an incidental not face an mask. not an incidental face mask. No, it's not. Nonetheless, Oregon has it back out to the 42-yard line. Clemens again to throw. Now he's going to flush it out. Going to try and run. If he gets the corner, he's got some room. 40, 30, head down and uh, out of bounds at the 24-yard line. And a big block by Terrence Whitehead. A huge block by Terrence Whitehead. 
looking after your quarterback, taking care of your quarterback. Now right here, Clemens has to use his speed, and he's doing everything he can to get around Swan Cut. And if you can look to the left of your screen, there's Terrence Whitehead giving a nice block. Well, behind the play, you almost don't want to risk something like that. Well, yeah. You make sure you get your head in front. Well, you're looking at Terrence Whitehead. He's making a nice block from the beginning, and then he comes into the picture to the right, makes a nice block. 23-yard line. Under nine. Whitehead looks like he wants to throw it. He will to the end zone. Sammy, and he overthrows him. Sammy had his man beat. But Whitehead must have looked like the parting of the Red Sea, and he just got excited. He got too excited. I don't think he's never thrown a football, and he's, he wanted to connect with Sammy so bad. Sammy was wide open. The safeties for Oregon State came in, couldn't get there. Missed opportunity. Long foul ball for Oregon State right there. He got away with one. He got lucky on that one. That was a touchdown. Sammy had his man beat. Just got to loft it up there. How can you not get excited, though? What a game. Second down and 10. Clemens going to throw it. Here comes some pressure. A little screen pass. Can he break the tackle? Yes. Flag is down. Flag is down at the 10-yard line. Let's see what the flag is. That might be pass interference on, on the defense, but... Morgan might have had a man downfield, too. Let's see. Ducky players are saying it's on Oregon State. Let's see what it is. It's a defensive holding on the Beaver, so it'll be declined, and Oregon will have the ball at the five-yard line. Again, we talked about the man, Tim Day. Tim Day is a, is a guy that's a big target. Once he catches the football, he does a great job of getting extra yards. Now watch right here, breaking tackles. Not one person can tackle Tim Day. He weighs about 270, and he runs like he's a, a nifty running back. The penalties, Joe, have killed Oregon State. I mean, they've really just taken them out of this ball game. To the five-yard line, Kellen Clemens asking for a little bit of quiet. 8.33 8 to go in the fourth quarter. Ducks going to hand the ball off, looking for some room. Whitehead to the two-yard line. Boy, if they can punch it in here, Anthony, it'll make it very difficult on Oregon State. Oregon State hasn't made any big plays, any long passes to you know, score quick. They're moving the ball slowly, so it's going to put pressure on them. Right here, Terrence Whitehead just got tripped up. He has a chance to, to make the play. I think, I think it was Richard Siegler comes in and makes a saving touchdown, saving tackle. Terrence Whitehead got denied from getting in the end zone. Clemens to throw to the end zone. Day over his head. And now a big third down coming up. So if Oregon doesn't convert, they're probably going to have to kick it. Well, well, you kick it, you take the points. It's still putting some pressure on Oregon State by getting three points out of this drive. It's done two things. Taking some time off the clock, and you're still getting points. And his man beat. Third and two. Will they go back to that quarterback draw? Haven't seen the option today. Getting ready to say, Joe, we haven't seen the option yet. Confusion and he says, Hey, timeout. Smart, very smart. This is at the end of the game. <laughs> Don't waste those timeouts. Don't let them sit on the scoreboard. Use them. 7.43 to go. Oregon leads it by eight, knocking on the door again. Can they push it in? We're back to Austin after this on your local station.
Here we go, third and two. Third and goal from the two for the Ducks. 28 to 20 with the lead over Oregon State. If they don't convert from that spot, it would be a very difficult angle for Jared Siegel. Ryan Lofton in motion. They're gonna run it. Looking for some room. Trying to get there and he cannot get there. Whitehead cannot get there to the one yard line. And they'll send Jared Siegel in for the field goal. It's a great play by Oregon, De Oregon State's defense of denying Terrence Whitehead from getting in the end zone. There was a crease right there, but that's what the team speed does. It closes that crease down really fast. Terrence Whitehead's running a counter, going to the right side. There's nothing there. Now, right there, he has a chance to get in. Can't do it. It's a wall. So a big stop for Oregon State's defense to get it all the way down to the one yard line. And a huge attempt coming up for Jared Siegel. Places down, kick is up, and it is good. And Oregon leads it by two scores, and a flag comes down. Let's see what the flag is. I think it's rough of the kicker again by Oregon State. And if it is. personal foul penalty it may be an automatic first down if Oregon wants to go that route let's see if it's a dead ball or not the kick is good there is no foul on the play for running into the kicker the ball was tipped Ball was tipped, and it still got through. Still got through. We're fortunate. Looks like right in the middle, Richard jumped up there, and or get to who it was, but that leg, he, he has some power in his leg, and that ball wasn't affected at all if it was tipped. Good strong kick for Jared Siegel, and Oregon leads it by 11. So the Beavers need two touchdowns in the final seven minutes to win. A touchdown, a two-point conversion, and a field goal to tie it. Well, as of right now, this clock is 654. That's going to be pressure on Oregon State to move this football. 11 plays, 86 yards, 18-yard field goal for Jared Siegel. It's important to get the three there. I know the coaches are feeling like, oh, a yard away from getting a big touchdown. Yeah, yeah but they got the three points. He walked up. You know, again, they took some time off the clock, Joe, and they got some points out of it. So the ball moves up five yards. Excuse me, it does not, and uh, Jared Siegel will kick it, and it'll roll down, and will come the Beavers, and a big hole through the middle, but it closes down. Ball's loose. Who got it? Who got it? Beavers say they have it, and it looks like they do, and they do. Well, that would have been a <laughs> backbreaker if they would have lost that football. Another look at it. Return. Everybody has their eye on number 52. He's the one that got the hard hit. Jerry Matson is coming down there, close the gap, and gets involved in the play. The ball was out. And the ball rolled right to the Oregon State Beaver player laying on the ground. Talk about luck. He's, he's holding, holding like, it. Like, like, like a loaf of bread. Very dangerous. On a kickoff return, nonetheless. Anderson, 21 of 40, 271, no picks today. to throw almost to Newsom and incomplete right there Joe Kevin Mitchell made Newsom drop that football because Kevin Mitchell looked like he was going to touch the football didn't touch it and I know Newsom thought okay he's going to knock this ball down tipped it looks like might have tipped it a little bit that's that tip drill The Oregon Ducks 640 away from a Civil War victory. The Beavers, explosive offense capable of putting up points quick. Anderson going to throw, looking deep downfield, and it is intercepted by Stephen Moore. Can he find a lane? Going to the Oregon sideline. Now he's going to turn around and sit down. 
Sits it down at the 47 yard line. Steven Moore comes in for a senior game. Joe does a great job. Derek Anderson has to throw the pick all day long, but when it counts, he threw the pick. Right here, Stephen Moore just comes across. Derek Anderson doesn't see him. A nice play. Stephen Moore did a great job, Joe, of sinking as a cornerback. You keep dropping, and right there you can make a play. And when you're a defensive back like that, Anthony, I was talking about it before, doesn't the ball just look gigantic? Oh, it looks Come huge. To? It looks just... huge, and it's slow motion. And look at the two defensive players trying to get Derek Anderson. Your eyes get all big like that, and like the blimp's coming down at you. <laughs> Stephen Moore had it stick to his hands, and now Oregon with great field position. If they can get a touchdown here, it might be the knockout blow. They'll keep it on the ground. And the flag comes out, and it might be on Oregon State. It's on Lawrence Turner, and that was a costly penalty for Lawrence Turner right there. The only way is if they call it on both players. I'm not sure what Dan Kaus did on that play, but we'll see. Dead ball, personal foul, offense. Dead ball, personal foul, defense. Penalties offset, second down. We'll see it again. I think uh, no harm, no foul on that one. Well, Lawrence Turner got away with that one because he was the last one to hit. They usually the catch the last the guy. Mike Riley's trying to keep his ears warm. He's got the hood over his over his hat, over his head. Second and nine as we move under six minutes. Ducks will run the ball. Whitehead looking for a little room. Can't find it. A couple yards out across the 45 to the 44 yard line. Whitehead carries to the 44. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. As the clock continues to move down, Oregon in no hurry to get up either. No, they're going to take their time. Now, I don't know if a player's injured or they're just taking their time. I think a player's injured. Well, they finally all get up. But that took about 15 seconds off the clock before they reset the clock for the uh, for the play. So now the referee will finally start the play clock. And Oregon State doesn't want this. They don't want this ball running, this clock running off like this. Getting down to four and three minutes left in the football game. And there's 20 left on the play clock, so very important for Oregon here not to run a play until the yes. use every second use you can. The clock. And Clemson has to be smart and think about this. Down to 10. Flag is down. Clemens to throw, looking deep. Too far for Williams, and another flag comes down. So we got two flags on the play. We'll have to sort it out. Laundromat. Well, I didn't see the first flag, Joe, but I saw the second one. I saw Lawrence Turner holding. Sammy Parker or Demetrius Williams. It also might have been an offsides or an illegal motion, so let's go back and look at it. It is a legal shift on Oregon and a holding on the defense. Illegal shift, offense, holding, defense. Fouls the loss set. Replay third down. Holding one motion against the Ducks. Holding against the Saw Beavers. the flight come out here on the near side. Still third down seven at the Beaver 44. With, with 4.54 left in this football game, you have to really think about as a player not to get any penalties on you. You have to be smart, control your emotions. Oregon State, right now, they're behind. They're going to get frustrated when things happen. They got to try to control themselves. Third down and seven. Clemens puts Weatherspoon in motion. And he'll throw. Protection breaks down. Throws it out there. And incomplete. So Oregon going to have to punt the football. And you know the Beavers are going to come after it hard. Well, this is it's still good for Oregon because now we're talking about field position. Paul Martinez can punt a nice ball and pin Oregon, pin Oregon State back. Oregon State has a long ways to go. Joe to score two touchdowns. Paul Martinez in the 
Goal placing deep in the meter. There's a snap. Here they come. And Martinez gets a very, very high kick. It's going to hit at the three yard line. Sandy Parker right there to make the play, and they'll mark it at the three. Nice kick by Martinez coming in there as a young freshman. The importance of this game and putting it on a three yard line. Might be his final punt of the regular season, and it was his best punt. <laughs> A great punt, Sammy. Just wait for him. So 439. One thing, Anthony, you know, Oregon State can go down the field. They can go down the field in this in this game. Oregon State hasn't taken a shot. I mean, they haven't beat Oregon on any big plays, 60-yard bombs. Oregon's secondary has to be smart, not give up anything deep here, and keep everything in front of them. Oregon State still has three timeouts left as well, so they have all their timeouts. So if they do get a score, they can get the ball right back. They don't have to use any of their timeouts here. The clock is on Oregon's side. 97 yards away from making it a one possession game. Joe, here's the key in this last four That's minutes the is that the Oregon defensive line get to Derek Anderson. Yes, if Derek Anderson has some time, he's going to work this football, he's going to work this team all the way down the field. But if there's pressure, he's going to have a hard time throwing the, rock, throwing the football. A lot of times they say about Derek Anderson, when he gets flustered, okay, throwing interceptions or, or having pressure, that, you know, he doesn't deal with adversity very well. We're about to find out. He's behind. There's four minutes left in the game. Okay, can he take his team and bring them back and come out with the win? Right down there in front of the Oregon students. Tennessee asking for some noise. Anderson's going to throw it out of his own end zone. Devin Long coming, came up there. It's intercepted by Stephen Moore at the 10 yard line. He's got it at the 8 yard line. Stephen Moore coming play in his last game. He could play another year, Joe. It's all about the academics, but right now he's playing his last game. Tip ball, paying attention to the football, watching the football. The pressure with Devin Long right there. David Martin tipped the ball up. Stephen Moore caught it. Eight-yard line. I've seen too many crazy things happen. It's not the knockout blow yet. No, no. There's 4, 31 left on the clock. Anything can happen. It's not over, Joe, until it's over. Until the clock shows zero. Oregon State coming into Austin Stadium favored. Very confident all week. Oregon State fans as well, very confident in their team as they should have been with Two big blowout wins coming into the game. Whitehead tries to cut it up down to the four yard line. But Oregon acted this week, Anthony, all week long like we know something you don't know. Yes. Very humble, very quiet leading into the game. You know what that was, Joe? Playing at Austin Stadium. When you play at Austin Stadium, it's hard to beat the Ducks. It really is. Five-yard line. Beaver fans are, are starting to walk out. Beaver fans starting to pile out. This game is not over yet. Clemens going to throw it. Hit. Still on his feet. Now to the end zone and just throws it away. That's close. It could have been a fumble right there. Swan cut was. You can see his hand trying to knock the ball out of Clemens' hands. Jason Fife, the senior, having to watch Kellen Clemens go the entire way the last two games.
Levin's 11 of 25 for 125 yards today. I, I know this is tough on Jason Fife being a senior and all. His last game, not really getting in the game, playing. But yet, he wants to win. It doesn't matter. Duck spread it out. Whitehead is in motion. Going to throw it. Tipped. And it'll be fourth down. Field goal. But you kick the field goal. And those are points that are just given that you, you take those points, Joe. You take those points. If they're given to you, walk away with them. Well, those Oregon State fans are leaving. This game is not over, Anthony. No, it's not over at all. I mean, you, for Oregon, you almost hate to give up that field position. Up by 11. Of course, if you get the field goal here, it'll take two touchdowns to set it to overtime. But see crazier things happen. And plus, remember last time, the Beavers got a hand on the ball. Snap is good, here they come. Kick is up, and it is through. So Oregon leads it by 14 with 3.36 to go. Beavers still with three timeouts. Well, we got time, Anthony. Joe, it's gonna come, on, come out with this kickoff return by Oregon State. What kind of field position are they gonna leave their offense to start with? College game is so different. I think people look at that number on the scoreboard and maybe think about the NFL. I mean, clock stops every time you get a first down. Yes. You got timeouts. There's a lot of time left. It would be important here if Oregon could make them use some timeouts on this drive. Jason Fife, of course, we talked about him, the senior. He's had some big moments including the cover of Sports Illustrated yes. with that touchdown right there. Well, Jason Five has been a big part of this program for the last five years he's been here. I tell you, you know, he's a, a very good person because knowing that he's coming into his senior year and have to split time and lose a starting job because he started last year, the Clemens, a sophomore. Looks like he's getting his helmet on, getting ready to warm up. Probably love to go in at linebacker and hit somebody. <laughs> <He> probably <laughs> Jared Siegel will kick it off from the right hash. And he will squib it again right down the middle. Ball takes a hop up. And it'll be returned from the 10-yard line. A little hole out across the 25 to the 27-yard line. So any sack here, Anthony, is always huge because it'll take about 40 seconds off the clock. You're right. You're right. Oregon State's off the line have to do a great job of protecting Derek Anderson. But right now, Derek Anderson looks frustrated. Frustrated. His passes haven't been on the on the target. Two interceptions. He's down by 14 points. Only three minutes left in the game. Looking one way, and misses Mike Hass. Now, we just talked about yeah, his accuracy. Beginning of the game, he was hitting everybody right on the target. Right now, he's a little high. Feels the pressure of the pass rush. Throwing two interceptions. They're down a little bit. He's 21 of 43. With two interceptions. Playing a deep zone. Rushing three guys. Anderson, plenty of time that time. And almost picked. And a great play by Stephen Moore. Stephen Moore. Joe, Stephen Moore's played an incredible last four minutes of this football game. What a break on the ball. The closing speed that he had right there. It's a simple out pattern. And Stephen Moore does a great job of getting hands on the football. Challenging Mike Hass. Challenging the receiver. Saying, hey, you can't run past me. You're not going to run anything underneath me. Third down and 10. Of course, it's four down territory for the Beavers now. Anderson back to throw, pressure, and he goes down at the 20 yard line. It'll be fourth and 17. And Joe, there goes the clock. And they might be sending the punt team in, which with three timeouts, maybe they feel like it's their best chance. 
they'll have to use them on this drive and then hope to get an on get it get the ball back after the timeouts David score and then try and get an onside kick that well, probably their best chance to win the game well because right now their defense is playing the best so they want to put the defense on the field and say stop them give us another chance to score some points here ducks in their standard defense and a bad snap takes a hop pretty good punt by toby hits and takes an oregon bounce at the 47 is where it goes out of bounds. And that's where the Ducks will have the football. So the Ducks can get a first down here. It'll probably be the football. Game. Yes. They're going to run the football. I look at the Ducks running right at Oregon State, right up the middle, using that big offensive line of Oregon to maul those guys and push them back. And Jason Fife, is he going to come in the football game right now? Looks With like 2.31 to go. He is the captain of the ship right now, Joe. He's taking control. He's coming out. And the fans giving Jason Fife a big round of applause. Of course, Fife will have another opportunity to play later this year. Ducks a double tight end set. They're going to run the football. Washington for six, call it five yards. Danny Washington over the right side. And will the Beavers use their timeout here? There's no reason not to use it. You can't get the time back. I think I mean, the Beavers has given up, Joe. If you look at the, de the demeanor from the players on that defense, they're slowly walking back to the huddle. They're not talking to each other. They think it's over. There's really no reason not to use them, though, Anthony, to try and get the ball back and try and score a quick one and get an onside kick, and you never know. I mean, yes. I, I realize we're under two now, but you might as well use the timeouts. Yes. Well, or right. Oregon's right in. That's going to run this clock down. I mean, they're not, not going to rush to get up to the line of scrimmage and call a play. Ducks will run it again. It's Washington. Cuts it back. Puts his head down. He approaches the first down marker at the 38-yard line. And once again, the Beavers in no hurry to use a timeout. And now they do. Now they use a timeout. The idea possibly being that they needed to save one for the second possession. Yeah. But at that point, it won't matter because even if you have that timeout, you can still run the clock out. No. You never get that time back. Take a look at today's State Farm Player of the Game. And we're just going to make it plural. Players of the Game. Let's come out. And uh, Kellen Clemens in his first Civil War as a starter. Not huge numbers, but still manageable enough. And he allowed his playmakers to get in the end zone. And also Stephen Moore doing a great job with two picks here late. Well, Stephen Moore came and played at the last four minutes of his football game and showed up. And that tells you about the type of player he is. He's playing, playing four quarters of football. Here's the play of the game on the screen presented by Oregon Community Credit Union. Kellen Clemens now with the headset. I wouldn't be surprised at all here to see uh, a keeper, an option where he doesn't pitch it. I'm sure if they're going to run the option, they tell him, hey, do not pitch the ball. <laughs> no. Hold on to that football nice and tight. Or a quarterback draw. Clemens, 11 of 26, 125, three touchdowns and one pick. Also fumbled the ball once, but ran the ball pretty well today. You know, it's, it's funny that who would have thought that Oregon's offense would score 34 points against this Oregon State's defense. Third down one at the Beaver 38. But that's why, Joe, they play the game. It looks like Oregon's going to have the first down. Kenny Washington on the carry, and that's probably going to do it. Beavers still have two timeouts. But the Ducks will be able to take it down, and they start congratulating themselves on the field. Anthony. Always try to be so careful because you never know what can happen, but the Ducks hold on here. It is a gigantic win for this team to write their season halfway through when they were getting blown out and to win four of their last five and to finish in third place at the very worst in the Pac-10 and get a chance to go to the Holiday Bowl or the Sun Bowl. Unreal how they played. Shaw outside has some room. Out of bounds at the 20-yard line, and even though he picked up the first down, love to stay in bounds, but it's a first down, and now the Ducks can just run the clock. Out. Exactly. It's a first down. Now they can run right in the middle of the field and, and, and get the uh, first down. Game's over.
Justin Finnessy, such a great young man. Ryan Shaw, he played a great game today on special teams. Joe, looking at this football team, though, and I'm telling you, Oregon's football team is going to be better next year than they are this year. They've got a lot of key players coming back on this football team. they got a lot of playing experience, you know, and they got beat, and, you know, they got work, but they, they stayed with it, and they're playing strong. First and 10 at the 23. Ducks will run it. And still working. And going down, but they'll just probably take a knee from here on out. Well, sometimes, you know, we talk about players talking before the game. I wasn't a talker before the game, but when you talk before the game, it can come back and bite you. It really can. You have to back it up. And the thing about it, it's a team game, Joe. I mean, you're, you're, you're talking what you can do, but you got to have, you know, 60 other players also perform. Richard Siegler said it was duck hunting season. But that's not the way it turned out here today. As the Beavers head across the field to shake hands with the Ducks, a hard-fought civil war, and Oregon wins it. Mike Riley and Keith Lewis with a orange shirt on. That's one of the oddest things I've ever seen. And that's Keith Lewis for you, though, Joe. That's Keith Lewis. I don't know what he's doing. <laughs> I don't understand Keith Lewis, but you don't try to. Anthony, Mike Bellotti still looking for Mike Riley to shake hands, trying to get through a mess of players out there on the field right now. They may talk to each other here a little bit. But a, a disappointing loss for Mike Riley. A huge, gigantic win for the Oregon Ducks, who won four of their last five. They are either going to the Holiday Bowl to possibly play Nebraska, or at the very least to the Sun Bowl to play a team from the Big Ten. We're back to wrap it up right after this.